Are we live? <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. Okay, <laughs> what's up, everybody? Hey, welcome to Black Chat Valor at episode 129. Yeah, we're almost at the magic 130. When we get to 130, Josh is going to twerk on stream. It's going to be sweet. <laughs> yes. Uh, he's going to throw the dumpy back. Uh, we got a special episode here today. You got me, Josh Bala, the usual crowd, and Ender. Is joined us as well. Kind enough to join us as well. We've got some uh, EMEA representation as well. Thank you for joining us, Andy. We got him on. Yeah, the American representing EMEA. You got to love yep. it. Yep, yeah. absolutely. I'm a fake American too. I'm basically, I mean, you're basically European too, but we got you on specifically to talk about Carmine Core. So I hope you're ready. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> I refuse to say anything about them anymore. Uh, oh, really? Uh, the next time I do a Carmine Core co stream, I'm only going to talk about the good stuff that they're doing. So I'm just going to zip my mouth for two hours. <laughs> But it's like you're taking a vow of silence until they play proper Valorant. Yeah, basically. I think, that's, <laughs> oh I think, my I think God. it's tired at this point, the Molden. Yeah. I mean, uh, I I turned up late to the episode. That's why we were late going live. I was late. I couldn't get the system working Hook. as well. It, it was me really this time. Well. Hook doesn't work as well as saying it just Hook sounds and badass. Yeah. It's just like Hook. Hook. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work as well. Um, you wanna dive into it? We've got a pretty no, no, packed no, no, episode. No, no, no. no, no. Can we show the thumbnail? I just, I have to, we have to look at this. Show the okay. thumbnail for this episode. Zoom in on Josh's Whoa. head. Whoa, what's wrong with my head? There's hair! <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Look at that. that. That is a freshly shaved oh, paint. That is incredibly at freshly shaved. Dude, the I'll AI tell you what, it was, tries it, to add hair to you. I don't get no, it. No, I had hair. I, no, oh, oh, no, no, no. Wait, no, what are you no, talking no. about? It's, it, we, it's AI Wait, you're upscaled. AI generating the thumbnails? We use yeah. an AI image enhancer. Do you think your webcam looks this high quality? It's not a webcam. It's a bloody Sony uh, Alpha 6000 or whatever it's called. <laughs> it better look that high quality. I paid for it. <laughs> It looks like you have makeup on. How did it looks you ever... very high quality. Yeah, everyone looks like they got makeup on. So does that mean if we take the thumbnail and it's my fingers over the top of it, it's going to give me like 10 fingers or something? No. Um, like if I, if I do this and it's all maybe, devious. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. I don't we'll think do it. <laughs> I think you're extremely devious. devious. I think it's just like it's upscaling and like making it look as if it's a high quality. Oh, it's it's like been trained on people with hair and not headphones. So it doesn't distinguish and it thinks that your headphones are hair. It thinks you've right, got like right. an actual like Einstein esque like oh, hair where it's like pushing out to the side. Oh, that's and incredible! And it's, it's trying to upscale it into hair. Yeah, and that's oh, why really. robots will never defeat humanity. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. True. Uh, True. I want to. I want to get started with the episode. I don't know about you guys. We got a lot to get through. I'm a busy guy. I got places to be. Uh, we got to do this episode in 45 minutes. By the way, is that cool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got stuff to do. No, Good I'm luck kidding. with that, friend. Good yeah, luck. Yeah, I'm kidding. Uh, the first thing is uh, this guy's toast. He's a streamer. Yay! And he's got, he refinanced his house to sign Yay. <laughs> so he's got Yay on the team. This is big news, honestly. People, people were mad hyped about this one as well because it was like the second highest up voter post on the, the competitive Valorant subreddit. Shows the amount of pull that Yay has. But, uh, Pretty sweet, honestly. Pretty sweet move because, you know, it seems like a bit of a win-win. You know, Ye still gets to compete. Playing on like a team full of grinders, you know, gets to showcase his stuff. The The announcement video was quite funny as well. They had like a, an awkward moment where both Disguised Host and Tarek were kind of like staring at the camera, smiling for like five seconds. <laughs> and just like had to hold the smile. It's the worst. I can never hold a smile. I always like, my, my face falters. I don't know. My muscles aren't trained for faking a smile. You got to try all right of your now. smiles are genuine. That looks so good. You Pretty look so good. handsome. You look like a normal this. smile. What? But like doing it for like long periods grimacing. of time. You, you have to make the sides go up. <laughs> I like, I, I lose power here. <laughs> you and then, and then it mark. slowly goes into like a grimace. It's like. Yeah. Well, you have to think about the weight of the mustache, right? It's like pressing yeah. down on his upper lip. It's hard to hold a, a smile <laughs> for that long. Josh, what, what is that thing? Doing? It's like you're going <laughs> to strain yourself. <laughs> Whoever said that lapel mic should be fired, by the way. That looks terrible. On toast? Like, it's what is fine. that? It's. I look at his shirt. This is not. I mean, like, surely he did fine. it himself, didn't he? Yeah. This is literally his home. <laughs> this is the one the, that he's selling to get Ye. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice house. Uh, no wonder he was able to afford Ye refinancing that thing. That's pretty good. 
Hmm. So it's he did a bit, bit of a debate. It's this bit where the they just start smiling at the camera. <laughs> no, it's well, after this. has it's a lot of zeros. This. It's after this. Oh my hey, god, hey. you know what Tark is doing? You know how uh, that one scene from Star Wars, Obi-Wan's covering his mouth when Padme's like, Anakin just killed a bunch of kids? And, but like, you and McGregor were just like laughing through all of that. <laughs> That's what Tarek was doing right there. He was just covering uh, it up because he couldn't hold it in. That's funny. That's good. I thought he was yeah. LeBron Jamesing it, where he's just trying to, while he's mic'd up, to talk yeah. something secret. I mean, big, credit uh, as well. Credit as well to Cloud Nine for paying, you know, Ye's severance fee or whatever, so that he doesn't have a buyout, so he can join a team like this without, you know, it costs less than Tarek at this point, perhaps. Yeah. I mean, well, I don't think they would have been paying a salary to keep the buyout, regardless, but. No, no um, that would not have been good business sense. I don't think so. But uh, a big change I, in terms of what it means for Disguise Toast team as well, in terms of them winning Ascension. I, listen, a, a great, as great as a player Ye is, I think, I don't know, it's um, downplaying, I think, the other teams as well and the level of play that, you know, the other America's teams are playing at to, to say that this would be an automatic win in Ascension just by adding Ye, even though he is, you know, a goated player. Um, but it's a it's a cool addition, I think. Definitely add some some of that a extra firepower. The guy's got a ton of experience. He's bringing to a team that's already you know looking to try and uh, try and do quite well. But uh, yeah, I don't know what you guys make of this. I mean, I think it's obviously not an automatic ascension win, but you shouldn't you shouldn't doubt how much like adding one insane player can make in terms of the difference to a team's performance. I think that. If they put him in position to just try to hard carry, he's going to be able to hard carry a fair amount of the time. Like, if you put this guy just on jet and he tells you, like, the favorite ways he enjoys being set up and you play primarily around putting him in good positions, then, yeah, he's going to win you quite a lot of rounds and that's going to spiral into winning some games that you wouldn't have otherwise won. And they'll, they'll get deeper in the tournament, I think. I mean, they actually got kind of rolled this time around in challenges because they faced off against M80, first of all, and then they, they didn't even play a single game against somebody in their other group. I don't M80 think. TSM so, yeah. over and over again. But it's... Um, they're both it's in the, definitely the gonna group have some again, impact. by the way. <laughs> so they get to run it back. Both, DS, or both M80 yeah. and TSM are in the same Let's group. Let's go. So good. Yippee. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a chance that they... There was always a chance, but this significantly increases. I just don't see how they could still overcome M80 and the guard, which are just like full, um, you know, full rosters who've been playing together for now a long time. Well, and then D DSG as well is still making changes. So like, it's not clear exactly what their roster is going to look like towards the end and 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 that just requires a whole bunch of restructuring in terms of strats when you bring in a player like yeah so uh, i don't maybe maybe a top four but i don't see them making ascension it's, yeah is it top three in the groups that makes the playoffs you mean top three in the groups make it to its, oh oh in the no it's uh yes it is it's, but is then, it top three i thought it was top four Top four, what, yeah. What was it in split one? If we click on split one, it will tell us, I think. Well, it was, it was yeah, that, it was but I, I was getting confused because of the way that the yeah. stupid playoff seeding works anyways. But yeah, 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 it's top yeah, four. yeah. So they, I, I think with this change, they would be a contender for playoffs. But they've also got so few points already. They only got seven points because they, you know, they're in a tough group and they ended up it, placing they, fourth. They'd what, have to win split two, not split two groups and then split two, like... Mm. Face-off, playoffs, whatever. Yeah, I forgot it was a weird point system. Yeah, the point system is absolutely bizarre, but they're, they're not in a great spot. But I think I think the most important uh, question to ask here is, how does this affect Ye's legacy? How does this affect Ye's legacy? <laughs> Are you joking or... I can't Are you serious? <laughs> no, I'm kind of... No. <laughs> oh my God, where's that come from? How absolutely done that? me where did that come from uh no i actually mean it seriously like in terms of his value heading into next year do you think playing on this team actually changes it at all because to me it's a low enough team that there's actually an advantage there where he's not expected to find success like if Ye joined m80 or something and they and he made the team look worse and they didn't win ascension or something like that, I think it would actually negatively affect it. But I think even if this guy's toast team just bombed out of the tournament, it really wouldn't affect how people think about Yeah, He'd still be a top contender heading into next year. Yeah. I mean, there there was concern. I, I was a little concerned. I'm like, oh, this is going to make him look bad if they don't do good or and if he doesn't do good or whatever, if he's like, but 
realistically, he's already proven himself. There's no chance, like, he's going to get picked up by a partnership team next year. As soon as they can sign people again, he's going to instantly have a contract and shouldn't change anything. Yeah. I also think, like, a lot of that at, like, the high level is, like, word of, word of mouth, like, pro player to pro player. And I, I have a hard time imagining that he could, he and the team could perform worse enough with him performing individually bad enough that that would actually be a problem because it would only be an individual like he's just absolutely falling apart at the seams in which that could yeah. have like some effect later on um but i just feel like that's super unlikely yeah, yeah. i mean i i agree i don't think it's really going to change too much uh, but there does seem to be a lack of understanding in the community so spread the fucking word i mean the, he couldn't have joined a pro team anyway like a, a partnership team the the window is closed no one can make changes stop asking me what roster changes carmen core need they they can't no one can make changes this year it's it's locked in yep yeah all the way up to us like till after lcq once once you finally are i mean there's a date but basically that's when teams can start doing stuff is after they end the season um, does it yeah. do you know if the date is before champs though because like can teams that no, don't no, no, make no. it to champs no they can't it's everybody okay. it would be on a fair ground at least good 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 i was about to say that would be really problematic i mean but are they really like uh i guess carlos is not in the league anymore but people are going to be poaching you know like it's not yeah. <laughs> they're going to be talking past that date um i i think the date this year by the way has been an absolute travesty like nobody can do anything to improve their rosters even two weeks into the split when that's like the the latest time that you could even change something to make somewhere and yeah. all these people who are free agents like they can't even get picked up that to me like especially that there should have been like at least been an ex like a clause that says okay if you're a free agent you're not signed you're not attached to any team you should be able to get back in the league if you're that good you know mm -hmm. but i guess that well, could screw other players because there's no severance there, there actually there actually is something in the rules about getting dropped and be, and there's something called safe harbor where you're allowed to get picked up again um but it's been so long since i looked at the rules um but it's you know that kind of thing would apply to the yay because he got um bench and not bench but cut from cloud nine um that he would have been he would have had some kind of like safe har harbor thing where other teams can pick him up um yeah, i remember that but yeah, I can't. I can't exactly remember how it worked, and I think those rules have probably been updated since then, and they just haven't been re-released. Hmm. Okay. Well, interesting news, regardless. Um, in other news, guys, Icebox is gone. Is going. Let's Whoa. freaking go! Heineken zero point zero in tears. Oh <laughs> yeah, what my! Is going on there? <laughs> yep. What is going on there? Why? Why have we got a sponsorship yeah. for a mat that's leaving the rotation? What's Don't What's know. happened? Not sure. Probably miscommunication between the sales team and the uh, the dev <laughs> no, team no, there. No. But uh, yeah, quite unfortunate. But Bind's going to be back in with a couple of those changes. The Heineken so Zero people are like, guys, we need to... The only thing we'll do is sponsor Icebox because it's ice and we want cold beer. Cold beer. <laughs> ice cold beer. And Riot, yeah. Riot's like, no, but like that, you can't do that. Like, you can't do that. They're like, no, <laughs> we want that. <laughs> like, what about uh, another map? Uh, what about Fracture? <laughs> Fractures in America, like Americans like beer, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah there's. Um... I, I'm, I'm actually sorry. Just before we talk about bind, I'm a little pissed. The icebox has just started to shift the meta into a, a, a yeah. meaningful way, we're, and we're getting rid of it. I mean, it's been years. It's been at least a year and a half since the the basic comps were decided on icebox, and it's been extremely, extremely static. But. but a year and a half, and then people have started eventually to tweak it on Harbor. What do you mean? What are you looking at me like but, that for? They have. Josh hasn't really changed. Yeah, they're using Harbor Viper, but it's still the same map. It's still exactly the same type of play. That's Maybe not Sprite true. That That's not true. Oh, Harbor what do you lets mean? you take Snowman control. Yeah, oh, it's, no. it does. It, it does. Sage but does it too. Does. You just wall and push, and you still no, lose the round. Lie. That's cap. That's cap. Come Don't believe on, it, man. People were doing that last year. But you can actually, and you can losing. take sight control. You can take sight control with that, like sweepy. You can do that with iPad. Omen, like <laughs> with Omen. This no. I'm just saying, bro. The meaningful way. Come on, guys. You guys are you guys are pulling out two strats that people yeah. have tried forever, and they still yeah. are probably dog even with Harbor. And you see teams who are running Harbor Viper not even do it. So I'm sorry, but that. Yeah. Argument, come I'm on. I'm pretty now. sure we. Was saying all right, the all right. same stuff when Fnatic are running their um no duelist comp for the first time. I feel like innovation on icebox. <laughs> they're running they're running the this comp. So it's low. crazy. The bar is so low.
Yeah, the bar is really low. They are the only team that's ever looked legitimately good on that map. And I I am an Icebox enthusiast, so I just have to come out (laughs) clean here. I enjoy this map. I like it. I feel for Durka. It's some bullshit. We brought that they're you on taking... to talk about okay, no, but the, the real Not opinion. <laughs> the real opinion is like, okay, if you want to remove it, fine. I think there are some better candidates out there, Ascent Pearl. Um, but uh, doing it mid-season is terrible. Like, it is it's so not weird. even in like a break in the season. It's like after week four or something. I don't know. I just think the timing on that is really, really terrible. But why? I mean, I would just assume that the competitive um, leagues would keep the same map pool for the split, well, even yeah. though the ranked has changed. But I think, it, uh, listen, I, I, I might be behind on my information here, but isn't EMEA literally changing it to bind? Yeah, we're changing to bind on week five, I think. Is America's doing that as well? Uh, I can look up the patch. I mean... Yeah, because I'm not sure, but I know that EMEA was talking about swapping to bind, and that, is, that to me is just madness. Yeah. I mean, in some yeah, because... sense, it's like, yeah, oh, but the pros won't be able to scrim, you know, won't be able to get their experience in rank. Like, they're going to be scrimming it. What patch I don't is think it? it's necessary for a few weeks. 407 is the patch. Six, oh, what? 607? 407, I think, oh, okay. right? No, it's so 607. The fourth year of the I thought we were on third year. I don't no, know. episode six. Are you episode? Is that how that? I don't know. <laughs> is, that how, is that how that works? Oh, seven's in chat. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, I know that we will switch to patch 6.08, it looks like, on week five, same as the MEA, but that doesn't mean that we're going to run Icebox. doesn't mean exactly, or, fine, does yeah. it? I don't know. You could. But isn't it yeah. usually like three weeks after it's in rank, they'd put the changes? But that's for new Well, maps. no, it's dependent. It's dependent as well on like the events that are going on. So yeah. you're right in that sense, but there's been times where the event has come three weeks after, like I think... Uh, LCQ, for example, was mm. way past when Fracture came out, and they weren't running it there. In like, my so, I believe that the teams had like some say in those previous events where they like pulled the teams um, and were like, "Hey, yeah, do you like feel good true. about adding this map into the pool?" I don't know if that's happened for this. Um, Daddy riots just as yeah. soon as they're all locked into partnerships. Like, you're in my game now. But I also, get to make the rules. The fucked up thing. The fucked up thing about EMEA is even if they were to ask the teams, nine of them would say yeah. remove icebox yeah, yeah, yeah. and give us it's, bind. Yeah. Like, who it's would not want to take that bias. out of it's Fnatic's so map pool? It's so messed up. I but Fnatic I just could like bind it. as well. Fnatic were I mean, fan, fantastic yeah. bind. They'll yeah, be fine. You still want to have icebox in your Fnatic. Anyways, you're you're right. It sucks, but did we want to bind? Did we want to show the differences in the? It's, yeah. it's in the latest patch notes. I think. Did uh, everybody look um, at it? Yeah, the, I the at six, it. Can we, they, can they showed like the differences in the pictures. Well, just overall. Yeah, just put your fingers up. Ooh, wait, that like I built a little M-O-W. asset for yeah. that we've used before. For for, for the bind changes, not for it coming in, because uh, obviously it coming in. Is got like it. Got it. Got it. Um, <laughs> LRW. <laughs> LRW about the changes. Uh, just button. generally there we that go. was really funny i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> there's energy really enjoyed that um it should be images um at the bottom they also want to count us AFK down then and we'll do the stuff. low Paula. yeah three two so there you go one wait what are we doing <laughs> i'm confused <laughs> I don't Let's think go. it really changed that much, did it? I don't have a strong opinion about LOW. Oh, I hate frankly. the design philosophy behind the changes. It just uh, you, hate you don't like the this? design philosophy. Yeah, it's constantly just dumbing down like certain angles and making it like I don't know, claustrophobic. The same problem I have with all other map designs. Like like that, for example, you saw the teleporter spot that it used to be. There's nothing to hide behind. There's no place to play. The box is even shortened. Like it's, yeah, but why why would you want a spot there that they Because it's more interesting. You actually have to like do something to clear clear things as you're going through. You have to scale properly. I don't know. Yeah, but going through the teleporter and having to scale behind you in case one of the defenders is pushed out and you can't see them I don't yeah. like that. Yeah, that's a I'd good rather, point. But but, but I that's think scaling in general forwards the, is interesting. The that's in general like the thing that's happening elsewhere on the map. You're you're right about the team. Yes, that, minimizing minimizing positions, yeah. I mean, you can see that in showers. They've made the corner a little uh, tighter, so you don't, you know. But but it's it's more so like your utility more consistently clears the angle now. Hello. <laughs> oh, we're all over the place. <laughs> we made it back. 
Yeah. Um, Sorry, it was just really, it was really meta. We were going, hopping in the bind teleporter right there and just going tab to tab. <laughs> exactly. I don't like the changes though. I don't know. I like, I like the B changes, but I don't think they make enough of a difference, but I think they're cool. I like the teleporter move though, because I don't know. It's Shower's control was already really important, so nothing was going to change in pro play with that, I think, with the way people play this. But it just emphasizes it a little bit more. You can't really crunch people at the beginning of a round that are trying to take Shower's control. You have to wait until they're in Showers to try yeah. and run a crunch mm -hmm. on them now. But if they are in Showers, it, it's I don't know, stronger? you get these... Well, kind of, but then they can also call for help from the people from shore, and then those people can get a good angle without the teleporter people seeing them. So there's going to be some major weird fights there where basically the showers player just has to try and survive for as long as possible before help comes from shore, then maybe the defenders get punished for it. Um, I, I think I'm willing to give it a, you know, I don't mind game, see what change. people do. Yeah. I also so like I, that you could combo stuff at the top of showers there too. Like you could throw a nade through and there's actually a choke there that's usable. Yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. So I, I think that I, I'm a little bit sad about the removal of like set like start of round crunches, but I think in general, having the teleporter move forward is really important because I think going like B to A teleports, defenders could always match yeah. or outpace the rotations. So having those like five extra seconds yeah. it would take you to run down there is actually like really meaningful. Um, even for like defenders that take B long control at start of round and want to hit the teleporter, now right. they can like much more quickly get into showers and potentially fight out. Uh, so I, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the teleport change. Uh, the site changes though, I just don't think do enough. I think that my main issue with bind was that like, I thought like taking sites was actually really hard, but also like retaking them was like impossibly difficult there's on the no defense. There's no space on the sites. Um, there's nothing yeah, to play against. Exactly, exactly. So I think that like there's just far too little actually done to the sites themselves. Like yeah, opening up the entrance over by B is nice. Giving the vents is nice, but there's the like really cool. small changes that don't fundamentally change how it plays. No, I, I, think, I do like the vent. I think the vent is just a sick idea. I think you might be able to see some like good plant denial lineups from halls, at the which bottom. will force the attackers to try and push that. Yeah, it's it's like, there. Uh, yeah, there it is. Utility window has been added to B site into B hall. It's the very final um, ones. So I, I, I think this is really cool. I, I could see nade lineups coming down into default plant spots, which allows the defenders more time to rotate. I could see people throwing a utility out of that from halls to help the retake as well. So the flashes are coming from very different angles. You know, sometimes you flash from Hall's connector, sometimes you flush through the vent, sometimes you flush through CT. Uh, I think it's going to be adding a little bit, but B retakes mm -hmm. on this map were previously horrible, and I don't think it's changed too much. Everything's a small, nice change, in my opinion, but it's not, like, large enough to make me all of a sudden, like, be a oh, huge fan there's one of change how the that sites I, play. that I hate on A site. The, the slants that you had coming out of pipes, like, out of spawn, the main yeah. way, is just gone. So it's... You can't you can't tuck there anymore. You're visible from heaven. You're, yeah. So this there used to be like a nice little geomet geometric thing that you could tuck into, where you could hide from heaven. But now like you're just exposed. Yeah. Like it's so I, weird. I don't get why you would remove this. I think this is a quality of life thing because people used to just run there and and get killed quite a lot. But uh, I think it again, it's designed to try and help the A retakes a little. But I think it just makes the map a bit more boring because now the attackers don't actually have anywhere po like pushed up really play off each other like you could play one towards triple and one close at lamps but then your player is so exposed from heaven they can't play tuck because no one's contacting i don't know I, well and and also this is a great place to stall as defense so like you're losing more of the site now when attack takes it like for sure because this is this is a spot where you tuck in that cubby and you'd have a really good angle at anybody pushing the smoke or somebody pushing the dice so i don't know Stuff like this. There's a little, there's a little, also the little thing that you could peek short with is like, like an op angle, Kurt. I don't know if you could, if you know what I'm talking about, but like, I know you uh, by the, the gate, right? Like backside yeah, A by the, on back, the other side, the little cubby part. Yeah. The gate. That's a good call yeah, for the it. little box there. It's, it's, it's Barrel. cool, but these things, like what bugs me the most about this? Yes. It's an angle, but you're, you have no room to play on it. You have no room to walk around. You get on it you take a shot and you're getting off. And there's no, like, you can't really mess with the height or anything like that. It's just a one little piece. I wish this was, like, more of a platform or something like that. That would well, change the dynamic. They added one of these to Fracture on the ropes. And it, like, it gives you two different variations where you can watch drop on A. And yeah, I really like that. that I never see people better, use though, because that. Because there's, there's more space Goodbye, though, to run out. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
I'm still here. It's just my camera's decided to freeze. Oh. But I, I can't, it's just a different variation because I, I, it's the box because they, they shorten, you know, the triple box. Yes. They shorten that. Can you peek that normally when you're yeah. on ground level? No. Oh, so you can only watch short angle on top yes. of that barrel. Ah, uh, yeah, that is kind of weird. Because it's not like adding different elevation for the sake of adding elevation so that you never know when, like the, the people pe like trying to attack on the short angle don't know where to aim. Yeah, that is, that is a little bit more odd. Okay, well, I don't know. I liked Bind, but also I liked playing Icebox in Ranked, so I'm kind of upset that it's uh, being removed. Icebox was my dissociation map. I tweeted this. I lock in Silver. It's 40 minutes. I fucking, I dart the close short A angle. If a jet pushes, they die. I, and then I drone from pipes. And if my, my team will probably won't scale because it's Ranked and they don't push with my drone and they don't, they don't take any of the space. And then we're left sitting around and my jet Rainer will bait and be last alive. And then they'll get a bunch of eco kills and they'll be at the top of the scoreboard and they'll be like, what the fuck is my team doing? And then in reality, <laughs> they're just really bad at the game and it's really annoying. And yeah, yeah. that's me. Um, cool. Let's talk about some of the teams then that were the, the, the winners, losers, and maybe just the evens in terms of Bind coming in, Icewoods coming out. Um, teams that historically have been quite good at this one immediately. We already got a sneak peek of it. But uh, the one that screams to me is NRG. This Optic Core used to love Bind. There was a great map for them. Um, Icebox has been a good map for them as well. So you're kind of taking out one strength and replacing it with another. But uh, yeah, a bit of an even exchange, right, for NRG? That's where I'm going with. I think it's an improvement. I mean, NRG were the best team on Bind that we had in the game, I think. And um, yeah, they don't get to play Chamber on this map, probably. And they don't have the best Chamber in the world. But I think that they're still going to be able to make something work like fine. Yeah, Artis has stopped playing the Rays on Lotus, but that doesn't mean his Rays is terrible. Um, so I think that they're, I think that they're probably just going to come straight back in and be really good Win. here. <laughs> Mostly agree. I also think Crashes is one of the best Sky players on this map, and Sky is back yeah. in a big way. So yeah, everything is good for this team. And Finesse loves the TPs. W. Even bigger agree. Maybe some will pick Yoru again. I think this um, map might actually end up being solo smokes now that they've changed the A site a little bit. Like we saw some teams messing around with that with the solo brim double initiator. Um, I could see people doing that again. Although yeah. I suppose there isn't really any reason when there's uh, no chamber. Winners! Ba -ba -ba -bum. All right, next team. Let's go. Um, I believe it's loud. Yeah, it is. It's loud. Boom. Okay, new loud team. My brain's empty. I can't remember what this team was like on Bind. Aspas was a demon. They beat NRG or Optic uh, yeah. multiple times, I think, on Bind. So... I think they were a team that ran Solo Smokes, wasn't it? Uh, <clears throat> no, I think they ran Viper. Did they? I thought they ran Double Initiator and then they ran. Um, I'll take it less on Chamber, but I could be wrong. That. Or maybe they, yeah, maybe they didn't run the chamber. Maybe that's what it was. Double initiator, double smoke. Yeah, right, they didn't run, a, they didn't run a, a sentinel. They ran, right, right. yeah, double smokes, double initiator. Nobody yeah, saying anything for uh, W. Dude, they're, they're good at icebox though as well. Yo, actually, no. Maybe an L because they can't, they probably, I don't know. Sorry, Kerr, I just trolled you. Uh, they might not be able to like be as consistent with the Harbor Viper on this map. I'm trying to think if Harbor's like going to be good on this i guess he might Harbor i think Viper's Harbor's probably gonna be really everything. good like cascades to take true, be long true, and cascades true. to take short and stuff how are you opting to defend um yeah, this right, map w. at all against the cascade yeah also having uh the orb for plants on a must be like really nice i think it's a little harder to get like swung from like the defense to swing because now like the triple box is like so long out that actually like having two angles to swing off is harder but like sage was picked so often on that map just for the the wall to get the free plant on a that orbs pretty nice yeah I i'm i'm not really sure like this this is kind of equivalent in my head like they're just good at both maps but yeah i mean sure throw them a dub <laughs> throw them a dub <laughs> yeah i'll dub. stick with w. dub throw them a dub 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 I'd be a liar if I said or I remembered anything about this team's bind. So I'm gonna yeah, I, go with the team. Yeah, W. Yeah, yeah. they're so sick on bind. 
I cannot remember a thing. Aspas my... is a demon. I'm Dude. also uh, this episode. I'm not sharing my own opinions ever. I'm only gonna go with the. Crowd. No, come on, <laughs> no, man. I'm only gonna go with what you guys say. You made your preds, yeah. Brad. You have your little opinions there. Oh, my oh, preds are fucking course. wild, actually. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> next team, fanatic. Uh, instantaneous giga dub, I would say, but they're losing one of the best maps, but replacing it with also quite a good map. I, I'm gonna go with dub on this it's one. A, Josh is like, it's an L. L. It's this is my Josh Wilkinson voice. <laughs> no, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why this is an L. It's an L not only because Fnatic are incredible on Icebox, the best team that we've ever seen on that map. It's also a fat L because Fnatic have been up themselves about being amazing on bind for a long time whilst not being the best team on bind True. for a long time they've, they've been talking about the yeah they've been giving it the big talk but they've been at best like third best in the world on this map for a while yeah like ascend was better than them when they were playing it and they were incredible optic were better than them when they were playing it loud ended up being better than them towards the end as well like they, it's not the fanatic are bad on this map they're gonna be a, a contender but they're not just gonna be straight up best in the world because they invented the viper walls Oh, but... I've got some beef to start on that point uh -huh. <laughs> because it, it's possible that they may have been losing the map, but I think like the way Fnatic discuss maps a lot of the time is from like a theoretical standpoint. It's so, like I was on board with like I think their theory was better than those teams, but they were just actually like losing the rounds. Oh, I mean, you're they're, not, they're, not well. Their theory was let's not play chamber here, and it ended up being a Based. bit of a. Uh, no, it wasn't base. Chamber was Based. busted. He was insanely good on this map, and you could get fast flanks off against Fnatic all the time. And they they, they weren't they didn't have yay to carry them. Oh, it just says loser on the full cam. <laughs> <laughs> Any Carmen Call fans? Snap a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got to be an L for me. <clears throat> But that being said, they'll still never lose this map, so. Just, yeah, losing Icebox, this is like, this, sure, you could say Energy was good at that map, sure, you could say Louder good at that map, but Fnatic were the goats on that map. Like, so, yeah. Just on that virtue, I don't think that they're going to be any worse off for it, but it definitely hurts their map pool slightly. Um, they're still going to be the best from the team, though. The team in the world. <laughs> Losers. Next losers, team. fanatic, recent winners of lock in, losers. <laughs> <laughs> Furia, my favorite team. Um, give me sign me up for a fatty L, yeah, because same. Furia's icebox looks superb. Uh, you're talking about the you know, fanatic being the only team that's really been good at that map. I think Furia are up there too. I mean, they they brought it to uh, what uh, oh, god damn it, who did they play against at lock in? They played against somebody on this map and looked at it, but I can't remember who it was. Didn't they? Am I just making that up? Uh, what? Sorry. Oh, it, it was a champ. Sorry, a champs. They played against. All uh, oh, no. right. Well, yeah, T one. But I was thinking about the game against champs that they had mm -hmm. um, against Fnatic. Yeah, and they they looked great there, and they ended up beating Fnatic. Like one of the only teams Stopping. ever to beat Fnatic. It was on like Icebox. a really good game from them too. Yeah. Yeah. This and, and they looked amazing at it recently too. Mm -hmm. I also give this an L because of the way that their uh, roles work. Like on split, if they want to go for double controller, they have to have MW play the raise. Um, which... Or Quick. Quick was actually the player that played the raise for them last iteration of this roster. Oh. And they had Dejazine playing chamber. And Quick did not look amazing at it. So, I, I, yeah, I would agree with you. I think MW make, makes way more sense. But I'm just saying that's what they did last time. Hmm. This and team is a black hole for me. So, <laughs> it's an L. <laughs> yeah. I... The right side of the screen makes a lot of good points. Yeah, Brenna, I agree. They are, they're speaking facts right now. I go with a <laughs> L. But also, Khalil will just oh. kill everybody anyway, and they'll win. So. Maybe they could also Fine. just invent some stuff. This this might just be a plat check guarantee by accident, but we'll see. What you think? Um, Fury come out with the neon triple flash comp or something? And it might play some crazy. I don't know. But, but, yeah. but we're not we're not predicting the shirts sure, as losing the screen. We're not predicting them to be bad on buying. It's just an overall map pool L for them. That's it. That's all it is. Yeah. Um, we got a bonus team mystery. Oh, a mystery team. Who's the? Mi oh, <laughs> dude, Heineken zero point zero. <laughs> <laughs> Someone sponsor our podcast. We need sponsors. Uh, oh my if you're lord! You're watching this, and you've got a lot of money. Give it to us. 
<laughs> and we'll let you have an ad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, Heineken 0.0 is .0 definitely not really got their money's worth with Icebox. <laughs> Do you think they'll just carry show. it over to Bind? Uh, is it going to be the Heineken 0.0, .0 Bind? Well, we were discussing this during, <laughs> I can't remember what match. Was it the EG 100 Thieves one? Probably. I think it'll be a sense because it'll raise you. The, the Heineken raises you up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's a wow. different kind of sponsorship, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll do. Uh... <laughs> we were we were talking about this during the coaching, but Josh was trying to talk about analysis. He was like absolutely people talking analysis. Me and me and Def were trying to like theorize what the next map Heineken will be that that they sponsor. And I was thinking it would be like a hot map, you know. Maybe they try and like port it to Bind. They're like, ah, get a cold beverage, get a cold beer. Because it's hot, it's a bind, it's a desert. Literally the opposite of their icebox activate. Yeah, but they have like refrigerators in hot countries. There's no, fri so, there's no fridge in bind. There might what be, do you, I don't know. You think they need to add one? Maybe, I don't know. That's the in-game sponsors. We'll add an, that's the next level of it. Um, let's talk EMEA. Dude, my head is, I'm out of sorts today with this, oh, the, this hosting gig. I got. I, 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 yeah. Giants were a fraudulent Norton two team. You were right, Josh. <laughs> you wrote this. Well, I mean, and the, you, yeah, the, but you everyone agreed. This, with this. You wrote this it. Wasn't, this wasn't my hot take. This was, this just, was all you. <laughs> this wasn't all. This me. was all you. Giants are a fraudulent Norton two team. They looked really did, good mate, in their latest match. This game, though, I rewatched this match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I watched it live. I rewatched it, man. Why? Why? Was Koi, yeah, why? Because Koi were. Tossing. Tossing. Ooh. Ooh. We're going some... after the Spaniards next, huh? No, no, no. They're... So they're a good team, but uh, if Koi have this as their floor, <clears throat> they're going to end up being mad inconsistent. Look at the rating on Wolfen. 0.3. He got 10 kills over two maps. I mean, that is... I haven't seen that. I mean, Yeah, look at that negative nine in first <laughs> kill to first death. I mean, but that's rough. And they had so many bad moments, like Shados whiffing, Starzo all over the place, Wolf and AFK. Uh, it was only Trex, God bless him, trying to keep them in this game. Mm. Honestly, yeah. it was a miracle that Ascent was as close as it was with how Wolfen was uh, completely uh, irrelevant. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but their Ascent is really good, too. I don't know, man. This team, uh, this is two big back-to-back -back losses for Koi, and... I can't really even read anything off of it. I thought for the Vitality game, it was just like, oh, Vitality's out oh, playing was... <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, I mean, Giant's comp is quite interesting here, right? I feel like... I feel like the evolution of um, the way that people are playing... So people are always playing the Killjoy on this map, and yet you also seem to need the Omen Viper. The, there aren't really teams finding any success with solo controller and giants have just decided let's get rid of the killjoy and have nookie just hard anchor c and he's good enough to get away with it he was really bossing it i thought that they would end up having a very weak c side because of the lack of killjoy or just like you know weak b and c just in general wherever the koi hard hits came through but it didn't end up working that way mm. yeah, this, i feel this... like what was missing though there needs to be like more like b lurk attempts and stuff like this because i think that's where you actually run into a lot of issues is like you have to not like hard hold one site you have to hold two and killjoy can accomplish both of that with her utility and just like commit herself to the other one so I, i'm still not convinced on the, on this team comp i think they're gonna run into a lot of trouble <laughs> Kurt, can you rewind this one as well? Shados team flashes Cold Dementor into the aftershock. Like, if you run it in slow motion, that is... Like, like this stun comes through, and there's a stun aftershock combo here. And then Cold Dementor's full blind running through after Shados has blinded him, and just runs into the aftershock, and Shados blinded him. <laughs> oh, you're not These moments are so funny. Crazy. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. They look so much worse than... Sorry, I'm sticking with Koi. I still not. I mean, Giants are definitely a fraudulent own two team. There's nothing to disagree with there. I think, but Koi, like, how do they look? So, how do they have that first couple matches where they looked insanely good and they had insane strats, and then they go and do this? I don't know. Something else is going on. This is like an EG thing. I don't. There's something else going on. Well, I think it's weird too, because like 
from talking with everyone kind of like leading up into week one, I don't think a lot of people on the broadcast thought Koi was going to be fantastic. You know, I thought they were going to be like, okay, you know. Um, but I don't think it was like there was a lot of excitement behind them. Um, and then they had like that insane match versus uh, Navi. Navi, of course. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm like... I, I think maybe people overreacted to like them clutching that one out uh, and then like having like really high opinions of them. Um, Cause overall, I don't think that in their like subsequent matches, they've looked that impressive to me. Uh, like they lost to a vitality that didn't look that great last week. Um, I think they, I don't know. I think they tried a lot of the same things. And then in that match that they won against Na'Vi, like when it got to OT, that's where they started like experimenting and really like pushing the limits of what uh, Na'Vi was throwing at them. And like they got really creative in, in those times. But I I think maybe there's a bit of an overreaction after after that first performance. Yeah, Na'Vi were also playing Gecko and it didn't look good in either of the maps, yeah. I don't think. But on top of that, you also had crazy good performances coming out from Starzo and Shados. And sure. while Shados actually historically has been a really consistently good player, Starzo has been very up and down. And I felt like this was a bad performance from him, whereas the game against Na'Vi was like an ultra good performance from him. Um, and I just don't... I, I think as well, Wolfen is naturally going to be pretty inconsistent because... The man's got a really unusual play style, and they're trying to rotate him between playing Sentinel and Jet. Like, he's playing Killjoy and Jet, depending on the map. And it doesn't look like he's particularly... Even when they were doing... Even at lock-in and the game that they were doing... Uh, uh, you know, the game that they won against Na'Vi, Wolfen just seemed like he was doing what Coldementor told him to do, and he had no idea, really, what he should be doing himself or agency over his own play, I don't think. He's just always you know, always going with the paranoia or something, even if he's dashing into a molly or whatever. He doesn't have the, doesn't have the thought process of like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't do this. He's just very yeah. inexperienced. Giants went up a couple of notches though from this one because, I don't know. Yeah, Koi, weird team with the high peaks, low low lows. I, I also, your point previous, Ender, where you, you were like, you don't really understand where the hype's coming from in week one when you were talking to people. I yeah. find that a little bit surprising just because of, them playing NRG close at lock-in. It wasn't crazy close at lock-in. The, the first map they threw a 9-3 lead on Icebox, and the second one was not good. The second one they were trolling. That was the map where Star Cell Breach ults the, the site that's empty when NRG picked. Yeah. You remember that? That, that one was yeah. really bad. The Haven was really bad. They completely fell apart they, on that map. They played one good half out of four. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, well, and, you and put the, it like that. <laughs> yeah, w which, I mean, uh, and they looked like they had competent game plans. They just weren't quite there. Yeah. But honestly, I was coming into lock-in thinking it might be a coin flip game with Koi and NRG. And, yeah. uh, you know, I remember saying that because Koi players are really talented, but it didn't end up being as good as I thought it could be from Koi. And, yeah, I, I think that we're now seeing them settle much more down into being like a bottom-of-the-playoffs kind of team is where I would mm. be putting them. Okay, well, good news for Giants that they get that win, finally, one and two. Um, and then uh, moving on to the next topic, which we've got, which is foot esports. Josh, you love foot, don't you? Um, the EMEA Dark Horse. And uh, what are you trying honestly, to say? Why, why, have you, why have you sent me you like foot? You love to watch foot play? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I don't one know. of my I just felt, things. I just felt, you you're just there. <laughs> you're like a, the, you're, I don't know. It was just easy. I could just throw it to you. But I, watching this team play recently, I think now, I don't know. When I, when I was coming into the partnership league thinking about the Turkish teams, I thought, wow, this uh, Foot and BBL aren't even the best Turkish teams that they could have brought in. Like I, At the time, I thought it was Parla, which I thought yeah. kind of got snubbed a little bit. But um, my God. Okay, Lotus, their most recent game, lots of fortunate moments, lots of individual pop-offs for sure. But I think that they also had some pretty good ideas of how to play into what Vitality were running. Vitality's comp, I don't think, was particularly good on Lotus. Um, they're running the, the solo, the solo controller harbor solo with harbor double initiator and a cipher as well. Either the cipher as part of like counterplay against the neon, expecting them to play the neon because obviously Foot had showed it in the past with Kiwi. But um, I, I thought that Foot knew how to play around it very well. Um, when they were playing at Lotus, it wasn't. There were a lot of RNG moments. Don't get me wrong, 
a lot of like um was it Ada captain playing the viper i think yeah, on this yeah, map. Yes, yeah a lot of rng moments from a lot of players but the overall play was quite nice like the attempts to re-clear here they they picked very good timings in between when vitality were trying to set up and uh i was quite impressed just overall with the gameplay at this point now i think this team is cementing itself as that dark horse team for emea one of one of those teams that could be reaching at the bottom of the playoffs and maybe make a go of it they're also so happy to just take fights and kill people as they're going in i mean th this round you see them with the nice reclear using their utility but then they're also refusing to give up the space to vitality once they start to come in and Ada Captain's challenging. There was a, the player in short as well. I think uh, Cracks challenging as well. And they're, they're just constantly trying to fight them. And when Foot are on their game, which they were in this match, uh, were in the whole match, actually, they, they look really good. Mm -hmm. So basically, I, what I really loved was it looked like they had like very obvious prep coming into Vitality. Because when Vitality beat Liquid, I thought like, Vitality looked really good, but they just did the same things over and over, and Liquid just couldn't figure it out. Like, it was all these, like, sort of, like, attack A short at start of round, leave someone embedded there, and then, like, play mid. Um, so you had a lot of these, like, fights for short control, or, like, mid-round fights for, for A sewers, um, which I thought was really clever. Um, in a similar way to on Lotus, what Vitaly did so much of was, again, like, heavy pressure on one side of the map early on, and then, like, rotate uh, over the course of the round by, like, breaking down door and, like, doing, like, this huge sweeping rotation from A to C. Um, and they were, like, not over committing uh, on the early A hits and, like, rotating people over, uh, which was really nice. Um, and then on top of that, like, Kiwi had his first good game ever on Lotus, I think. Like, he actually, they've won games on Lotus, and he's done absolutely nothing. Like, like bottom fragging on the Neon. And it doesn't matter because the rest of the team is sick. Um, I swear this is real. If it's not, I'm going to look like a fool. I seem to remember. Didn't he pop, pop off, off against 100 Thieves? There you lock go. In? Oh, okay, lock in. I don't remember anything. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he, but he got thirty kills in regulation. Okay, so okay, fair, fair, fair. But week one, it was very, very unimpressive. Mm -hmm. I thought he had a really good series. On yeah. top of that, I think that uh, they said moving forward they're sticking without a captain. So in week one, they him. had uh, Muj coming in, and basically on any map where they wanted to stop playing double smokes and play Sky instead, uh, it was Muj locking in the Sky. Um, but I think Ada Captain had a performance that convinced everyone that he should be in the starting five permanently. Ada Captain's got an eighty percent map win rate this year when he's playing with this team, and they're five and zero on Lotus as well with wins over teams like Hundred Thieves and you know now Vitality and like some some genuinely decent teams. Um, Foot are definitely just low key getting a huge amount of momentum behind them, um, and. They, they've set themselves up to be a, a serious contender in EMEA, I think. On the flip side of that, Vitality, I think Bonecold needs to work on his ability to adapt in the middle of these maps. Uh, the, the Haven game, no, I'm not counting Lotus too much against them, but the, the Haven game, and also this happened against Liquid on Fracture too. They have a game plan, like you say, Ender, they have a great game plan. I think Bonecold's like, you know, uh, plans that he comes into the game with are normally very solid, very uh, well-structured with him and Sala, but then their ability to pivot on the fly is non-existent. Once they get challenged, whoopsie-daisy, it all flies out the window and they, they can't come up with a good answer to it. It feels I very think, slow to adapt. I think most of that, actually, I, I don't put it all on Bone Cold's shoulders, though I, I do a little bit, because uh, when, I, when I looked at the Vitality Koi game on Split, I was praising the adaptation that they were having. It was consistently like finding extra little places to find gaps that uh, Koi were leaving consistently, and that, in my mind, was how they were uh, how they were winning that series was out calling them but in this game i i agree but i also think that part of it was just some of their star players not being able to show up as hard right so the initial like whatever strat you call right off rip doesn't go well where you lose twist in or you lose um uh molesy or something like that then all of a sudden he has less less to call with and i think it yes. was more about that and then the other thing too is i i think i remember him specifically on ascend and their champions run and the lead up to that, he's just not very good at mid rounding on specific maps. Like it takes him like getting comfortable on that map to then have the ability to mid round. So maybe split, yes. for example, is somewhere where that team is gonna be really good and then you're gonna be really bad at mid rounding on other maps.
They've actually always he's always he's always been bad quite at poorly on Haven. Yeah, I remember the game where they played against DRX and they just got absolutely obliterated. He couldn't come up with an answer, but that was when he was much less experienced at his calling. Hmm. I forgot I was hosting for a second. Okay, saving the best for last. <laughs> you forget uh, you're here. You're, you're turned into. A I was viewer. just dissociating for a little bit. I was just, I was just having a little. There was nothing going on behind my eyes. Um, best for last. This is it. Liquid. Embarrassing Carmen Corp. Oh no. <laughs> ah, Sacu oh, Bleu. Oh, whatever the fuck Sacre it is. Bleu. I don't know. Dead. Sorry, can we not talk? I, for, I forgot one more thing I wanted to say about foot. So we can maybe like put <laughs> up, that off for a second. You're just <laughs> trying to delay the common core conversation. Well, yeah, because you said Team Liquid and that sparked a memory. Uh, foot should be 3 0 right now. They got absolutely sure. safed in their series versus Team Liquid. Uh, like, safe had some of the most insane maps I've seen um, and, and beat them. So good job, safe. But uh, that's a fraudulent win from Team Liquid. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, the team I mean, of the ma yeah, the team of the uh, month, whatever I don't know. The Common Core, they lost the Liquid. How much more do we want to hammer on about Common Core before it gets sad? Is it already? It's already sad? there. <laughs> it's already. Is there. it already sad? But mate, I mean, how are they still playing Triple Initiator with a cipher on a side? I don't know. I mean, what is this composition? What on, is the, on the flip side, Liquid are getting some nice confidence like under their belt, safe, looking great on Duelist, like But a Cypher mirror in 2023 on my ascent? <laughs> that is that one confused me. Yeah, absolutely bonkers as well. They're not playing Killjoy in, in this instance. But I mean, I don't know what... There's so much to go through with Carmen Core. <laughs> And we only have so much time on this podcast, so, I mean, do you want to talk about the fact that they're picking the Cypher for trap plays, yet they haven't practiced it? They don't, it feels like they they don't even have the it? Cypher taking contact. Yeah, it's, They have it's, three initiators on top of each other in market. Like there's, a, there's a few reasons why you pick a Cypher. One, you expect them to be playing a Neon for whatever reason, and you want to use the trips to try and kind of play that. Two, you have your cam. You can set up trap plays with that. Uh, and three, maybe just uh, the player is you've got somebody who's uncomfortable. They can't play Killjoy for whatever reason. You have a Sentinel player that can't play Killjoy. <laughs> Common Core, I, I don't know. They're in their own world with this shit. It, it feels like sometimes they're existing purely to just, they're like, ah, well, our game plan, our macro game plan revolves mainly around buying guns as much as possible. And so we might as well pick the agents with weaker utility and not play to their strengths <laughs> because we'll just shoot them in the head. I, what the fuck is there to say about this team that hasn't been said already? They can't make changes. It's embarrassing. I don't know. It's, uh, it's a struggle watching this team. They are, it they, are be they are becoming the fun suckers of EMEA. I also think they went like five rounds in this half where they just had all of their ultimates and just never cast their ultimates. Like, <laughs> you pick a comp where you have like three monster sight hit ults and or like retake ults because they're on defense and they just sat on them the entire time. I was I was actually losing my mind. Like way before split, I was the sanity was dripping <laughs> out of both of my ears. Uh, my favorite. My favorite on Ascent was round 17, where XMS has an op. So, Nevera, I mean, <laughs> they could be running a comp where, you know, they, they actually have an opper that's in a good position to do something. They don't even have Nevera op in. They have XMS op in, and he smokes himself off. He uses <laughs> both smokes at the beginning of these rounds every time, so he doesn't have them for the mid-rounding. He smokes himself off, even though he holding <laughs> mid and they can't pivot at all and then scream misses his molly over the top of cat and Rekar gets distracted by how badly it missed Rekar's in a bad position and he still gets the kill look at this look at this, look at this miss molly coming up here look at it god it's so good it's like one of the first times they've thrown you until watch it on the top right look where it lands on the top right of the screen scream yeah. throws it it's supposed to go towards the generator it would have flushed out nazis inside his cam oh here it comes here it comes red guy's in an awful spot what's he gonna do here comes the lead <laughs> up and over the top wait, look at wait. this look at where it lands that's on top of oh, cannon no. 
Oh, oh no! And they just hit, and their sight hit him with twenty seconds uh, left as well. They're uh, not hitting the sight. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, they, like... they're tr I guess they're trying, are they? Yeah. Slowly. I mean, this is holy oh, shit! Oh god, just ridiculous. It's just incredible. I don't think this team will ever be entertainment thieves to me because I have so much fun. This is uh, th <laughs> this is the one of the most fun teams to watch right now and yeah i'm glad I they will... can't make any changes I and wish i'm glad EG they're not like fixing them in. Watch. <laughs> yeah. uh, i, I wish watched EG josh's co-stream bad i watched josh's co-stream but i ain't fucking vote reviewing it i'm not watching it live mate the cast was fucking hilarious ender was losing his mind i mean <laughs> yeah, ender I mean... You, you 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 found a moment on split after they were up 12-0 they were in a round <laughs> they were in the pistol and then nevera forgot to buy and you were just crying I was oh, literally God. crying. It was, I, I couldn't believe it because I'm sat facing the players on the stadium. My hair has decided to go nuts. Um, and Nevera in the replay, it shows him taking off his, his headphones, right? Like that. But the players also have like earbuds underneath that go like directly into the ear because it's all about the noise cancellation and all that nonsense. And he takes the headphones off and the earbuds out afterwards. So he can literally hear me as I'm talking. And then he just forgets to buy. And like the slow descent I had when I realized, <laughs> not only I'm like, oh, he's in base. That's funny. And I was like, wait, he hasn't bought anything. That's also funny. Wait a second. He just won a round. That means he didn't buy. I lost yeah. a round versus the, the, 12. Mate, I, I know the, the Counter-Strike casters in the desk got a lot of shit one time. I can't remember exactly when it was for criticizing teams for celebrating too much that, you know, they, they were, I, I seem to remember Richard Lewis was hosting and there was some other people on the desk. I can't exactly remember who. And they were like, you're celebrating like you've won the bloody major and you, 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 you've only just managed to qualify. Like you barely, barely managed to scrape in and you're, you're celebrating like you won a major. I, I mean, this moment is like a different level. That 12 zero <laughs> Down, Nevera wins one round and he celebrates so hard he forgets to buy in the next. But the poetry is, is it comes down to his pistol, no armor. He didn't manage to pick up a gun the entire time. Enemy team has found a phantom by click headshots him while jumping. Oh, and God. by the way, I mean, part of that is funny because Nevera won the round with the right click, but also. Carmen called that was their first one round. They came in all classics, all classics on Liquid, and they nearly <laughs> lost. They nearly lost their round 14. I literally, oh. I, when I was casting, you, you'll, you'll never see this unless you're in the arena where you can see the casters, but I jumped up vertically into the air, then twisted my body par uh, parallel to the floor, and then let it land. I almost injured myself because I tried to throw myself. <laughs> it was a bad moment. Yeah, that, God. that match was... Uh, it's getting painful for me, watching them. It's getting painful for the players. Scream, Scream put a good half in the chat at 12-0. Yeah. And then tweeted I mean... afterwards. <laughs> saying, I'm not lying, he did. He did. And then he, he tweeted afterwards saying, like, it, this is horrendous. Like, I'm so... In, you know, what did he say? I, I'm devastated, like... We've let you down the way that we're playing or something to the French fans. And then XMS tweeted sure. saying, I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> what? What? Bro, like... turn on the YouTube captions on <laughs> any analytical <laughs> fucking content. Translate it from English to French and they'll tell you what's wrong. Like, you don't listen, people are, people are doing free VOD reviews for you. Like actively <laughs> telling you what's wrong. Like I feel, I feel bad for the players. I do. But at the same time, you reap what you sow, and this is a team that's been built with Scream at the helm with what feels like a bunch of yes-men as the coaches who are enabling this play style and this, this ideology with playing the game, and they are going to sail the Common Core ship into the fucking ground! <laughs> no nine, motherfuckers, at the end of this split! And it's your own damn fault! It's your own damn fault! Look around you! Look! You've got a fucking blueprint on how to play Valorant over the last two years! How to play proper Valorant! Two years! Why are you trying to reinvent the wheel? It is crazy, isn't Get it? Get real, they, man. They, it's insane. <laughs> it's like... I mean, it is a reinventation of the wheel, but they made a triangle and they're like, this will work. It's, <laughs> it's like, oh, this is so much better. <laughs> no. Your, uh, your no. shitty wheel... Your shitty wheel has only one side. Mine has three.
it's insane. Uh, yeah, I mean, don't want to go on and on about it, but they, they might be the worst team in partnership, easily. I I must admit I have not been watching the RRQ games. They won. They they won a match this last week. And who they, did they beat? They beat uh, DFM, I think. Data? Oh, DFM, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And DFM looks looked better. Th- I didn't watch that specific game, but DFM looked better over this than they did at Lock In. They're not doing a six man roster or anything anymore. And I don't know. Yeah, sure, Carmine got the win over BBL, but BBL also down there in the dumps, barely what? scraping. Why are they through. also playing Pearl and Lotus? Like Carmine Core actually looked like they had some idea on those two maps. It's not like they've been banned. No, away. no, no. That, Scream thinks that's their worst maps. Did you not hear the interview? No, I didn't actually. <laughs> what? No oh my god! No. <laughs> you had me. You completely had me. <laughs> Uh, the Astra moment. <laughs> you would have believed yeah. it. That's so crazy. Yep. Let's do some predictions for EMEA week uh, week four. EMEA predictions. Bish bash bosh. We'll we'll do the most uh, exciting looking matches on paper. I think we've we've curated these. I haven't personally. I didn't contribute to the runner show this week. I just kind of slipped in and I'm reading off the sheet. But the uh, the first match is Koi versus Foot that we predicted, and we got our predictions in. And for this one, <laughs> no. Fucking way! <laughs> we have all gone foot <laughs> esports over Koi. Uh, There's no so shot. Wow. I mean, it's kind of. I mean, you can understand it based on the way that we're talking about both of those teams, but it's not a guarantee. Well, I thought this was going to be a bit controversial for me. I don't know. I didn't think. I thought maybe you know maybe one or two more people, but oh. I enjoyed what I watched from from foot. I mean, just to rehash similar points, it wasn't just the fact that there was a couple of lucky RNG rounds. There's a couple of moments where they were flexing their aim, but I thought they had some very good reads in terms of how to play into comps, like what the strengths of Vitality were running, and they had good um, good calls in terms of their pivots. They had really good ideas of when to pivot on Lotus as well, which a lot of teams are struggling with. I think is is when to um, um, pick those timings well and and execute, but they were forced on rotations and and picking timings consistently well um, on, on the Lotus map as well. So I, I quite like what they're what they're cooking right now. I think this team has has got some potential for real. Also, Koi have not got a perma ban, so presumably they'll just get rid of Lotus. <clears throat> Even though Koi have had success on it, like beating Navi, I think it would be foolish for them to ban something else. So maybe that makes things much more winnable for Koi in general. I also think sometimes Koi are just going to have a really good game. Like, Wolfen's not always going to play that badly. He's going to sometimes play really well. He's got good rifling skill, and Starzo's going to play better than he did. Like, they're not going to flop around every match like they did against Giants and, and team flash themselves into Aftershock. So, I don't know. I feel bad about all <laughs> four of us going foot here. I do. I think that they're the favorites, but not. No, a hundred to zero. I'm, I'm pretty happy. I, I think we're all going to rise up together on the predictions leaderboard here. I think this is pretty good. I don't know. Koi, from the beginning, it's just been a downward trend week after week. And the the downward trend that I'm seeing is is enough to, for me where it's like, oh, wow, they're starting to make these types of mistakes. The ones you're talking about with the aftershock, that sort of thing. Like they're starting to make these types of mistakes. There was definitely spaghetti in the Navi game, but that was more because it was just a scrappy game overall. Yeah. This is... They're, they're starting to make, like, really bad mistakes that tilt each other and stuff like that where it doesn't look like they're having fun together. That's the sort of thing that I'm, like, scared of for them. So this is a turning point for me. If they if they look the same this week, I think Foot easily take it, and I think they're going to continue to decline. I'm going to give this one the Foot guarantee. It's happening for oh, sure. Nice. For sure. Look, I, I think Foot is just really good at finding windows, especially when they're on defense to punish you. Like, uh, they're Haven... Find, like their their mid round regresses. Like when Breach had ult up, they were like at one one oh five that time window. They're looking to like refight down sewers or down long. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think they just had like really good reads on like when the timings of the hit were gonna come in. And they were like beating a, a few different rounds, uh, beating Vitality to those windows. Um, and then like also playing through mid. I don't know. I just really like this team. I think they're very skilled individually, and I love what they do on the defense. Big fan. That. <clears throat> the only maps that they've actually won this year outside of Lotus hater, hater. are Pearl and Haven. You're a hater. That's it. So how many of those have they played? Uh they've played they've played 
Lotus a lot. So they played Lotus Pearl. They've played um, Haven. They played Ascent and Split. They lost on Ascent. They lost on Split. Who did they lose on uh, Ascent to? Team Liquid. To Liquid. It was where Safe when, saved. When was. Safe See, went they on got saved. Unreal saved. game. Didn't happen. In, in my mind, the think, way... Yeah. The way Foot have been playing, I would think that they actually would do very well on Ascent. They should, yeah. But that was also when Adder Captain was out, I believe, that game, wasn't he? Right. Yep. <clears throat> so, yeah, maybe... He was out for both there, but... of the games. But I don't both really... the second what, what maps it... against Team Liquid. What's Adder Captain going to play on Ascent? Why not just play Sky or Omen or whatever? Uh, I mean, no, because I think Fallen's like perma yeah, Omen Fallen duty. Fallen will play Omen. Yeah, I mean, I, he might play the Viper. They might pick up that Viper comp, but I. Would he not just play Control? Uh, uh, okay. Sentinel. What? Sentinel. Marge. Yeah. Marge, Marge. But, oh yeah, yeah. Whoever Marge he's subbed in for. Play that. But he's subbing in for Marge. So. No, he's, no, he's, he's subbing, subbing in for Marge. Marge. He's subbing in for Marge, not Marge. <laughs> it's Mooge. <laughs> <laughs> not Moj. Uh, he's subbing in for Moj, not Moj. <laughs> yep, yep. So the the like normal role that is missing there is a Sova player, right? Because Crax plays the kill yeah. uh, the KO. But yeah. I don't think Ada Captain. I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think Ada Captain plays Sova. I hey, maybe, they God, the so maybe they play the Sage. Maybe they play the Sage version of it. Actually, they could get away with that. Hmm. Yes, yeah, Age Viper. Maybe I don't okay. know. I'm not feeling great about that. Guarantee well, though. Doesn't matter. It's a guarantee. Um, next match: Team Liquid versus Fnatic. And I have a, a feeling of which way we're going with this one. Yep, it's the Fnatic sweep. We're all predicting Fnatic with this one. Bit of a no-brainer, I think. With them, uh, they got Alpha Year back in, and uh, yeah, Liquid. Liquid, uh, uh, they're not they're not as poo as they once were, but they're. Uh, They've made they're a couple of strides. Not, not going to be enough to take down Fnatic, though. Fnatic going to be punching for that number one spot, aren't they? The number one seed in EMEA. Do you think Fnatic get upset at any point? Uh, let's look. No. Like, yeah. Do you think they get upset when Icebox comes out and they, they pick bind and maybe someone upsets them on bind because they haven't been screaming it as much? It's a crazy win away or something? I mean... Because Fnatic should just go 9-0, and zero, but like, if there's going to be an upset, maybe Liquid would be a, a wild team to do it. Nah. I don't feel confident yeah. enough, though. You, well, you think Safe has a really good game and they have impeccable game plans? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not saying that Liquid are at that level by any means, but I, could I see the possibility of an upset result if, um, if they continue their improvement? Yampi has a good game on Sky. Safe is popping off on the Duelist. You know, Nats has a Nats game. I, I think they've got an upset chance here, but it's slim. I don't know. I thought hmm. I thought this week was like the best. Fina Obviously, Alfie is back, but they like they had like. Remember, I was criticizing them week two and stuff like that. I uh, they're just they're just back in such a big way. Durka farms Leo. Everybody, it's just impossible in my mind that Team Liquid win this game. It's just impossible, especially given how much room Liquid has had to grow. They have to continue to have that and find extra improvement, which I yeah. just don't see like doing in one week. So they what about your minimum thirty percent rule? No, no, it's a guarantee. What about your minimum? What about your minimum? But 30%? There's, like, there, there's, there's, there's the, in specific instances. No, never mind. You're right. It's thirty percent. <laughs> God. I just think the really protocols. sad thing is, I think we saw our last Fnatic Ice Box last week, because I think Stop. it's just banned from Stop. here on out. You think? Sad. Yeah. I mean, it, it only has to get banned for I think two more weeks. So that's two games. So you're thinking that we get the pearl? No, no, Fnatic will never that? let Pearl happen. No. <laughs> yeah, no. but if Team Liquid ban Icebox, then I think Fnatic will pick Pearl. Uh, they, they, mm, I don't know. I mean, Fnatic were crazy good on Fracture as well, but Liquid, Liquid did have that like very aggressive Fracture defense that was working for them. I wonder what Fnatic would think about taking them there. Because if, if you can stop that from happening, I think Liquid would just crumble. I, yeah, I know shouldn't... Fnatic have Pearl prepped, that's why. And they've been very clear about that, too. Like, it's not... It's just yeah. it's just been okay for them to, like, just have it, whatever. If they've got it prepped, they're not going to show it this early, I think. Oh, you're right about that. I, sure. think, I think you save that for as long as possible. Also, where, yeah. have, you got the, where have you got the saucy juice on, on that from? They've been saying it in interviews. Have and, they? And, oh. Yeah, Anders said he prepped Pearl on Twitter and stuff. I do like to 
spread misinformation though. Mm. That was my favorite thing about C9 back in the day. Like, Vanity would just deliberately lie in interviews, and you yeah. just wouldn't know what his actual opinions were on anything. Good times. And I like the kind of team where they love to... They do love to weave in a little bit of misinformation in the interviews. Keep people guessing. Oh, maybe. So, I don't know. Maybe. But they shouldn't... I, I don't think they'll struggle. They're very, very... Um, on a strat heavy team as well. I think they'll, they've got enough footage on Liquid to not really struggle with anything if they want to take them somewhere else. And the, uh, let's go for the final match that we're going to be predicting for EMEA, which is Team Vitality versus Carmine Core. Oh, God. Yeah, that's all Vitality, baby. No hope in Carmine Core. That looks so sad. It's so sad. It is so sad. sad. Well, it's a great day for the Golden be, Hornets. This is supposed yep. to be a giga banger French fucking like insane match, and it's just not going to be. Do you think there's a world where Carmen Core have now got this aura of bottom feeders, and now every team doesn't want to be the first one to give them their first win? Do you think it's got to that level? Wait, they've oh, already they got have, their win. They have a win over. Yeah, they already got yeah. their win. Never mind. That's fucking. Crap, but, but yes, I, I think that is going to be a thing, but. It's not. It's not an aura that's strong enough to make I've, vitality. But I've seen bots. this before, where a, a team is like so bad that nobody wants to be, to be the team that loses to them, right? Sure. And sure. a team that's inexperienced might let that get in their heads a little bit. And when it'd I have think to be of way later in the season, if it, and also it'd have to be a team that was like zero nine, like you know, like if EG keep losing and they're zero and eight, and their final game is against somebody that it's winnable against yeah maybe at that point it like gets in someone's head but okay when you're playing against right. a one and two team that has just been throwing their spaghetti around like they're in a pasta factory. sure 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 yeah no, <laughs> what you have to remember out, though. though is that like momentum always plays a factor and Carmine core have a 67 percent win rate in their last three rounds <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, just something to keep in mind i'm still on vitality but like this could be closer than you think yeah. All right. They're just carrying and Avera's carrying the celebrations even to now. He just turns up to the arena, just a husk of a human. They've been going to clubs, <laughs> table service, just celebrating nonstop. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> just keeping the momentum going, keeping the momentum going. Anyway. All right, that's our EMEA week four predictions. Now this episode is probably gonna be quite long. We might end up having to cut some stuff, but what we're not gonna cut is the EMEA power rankings, because it's quite interesting. We've done the NA power rankings previously. Let's do some EMEA power rankings now. My opinions are not going to be as strong on this one. Uh, I'll say it right now. The, uh, the, uh, the waves were created from the, the, the previous power ranking segment. Um, yeah, there was beef on the broadcast. I mean, there's beef by, on the broadcast. By the way, it I mean, who, who, no, who was it? Uh, what, didn't someone call you out for your lack of tier list on the desk? Because I remember you saying on the broadcast as well, well, this game definitely shows there are no tier lists in America. Oh, that was and me. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was you. I was doing my co-stream like, oh, fuck that was, Yeah, that was against you. There ain't no tier yeah. breaks, bro. There ain't yeah, no there are. Breaks. I mean, we'll get to that later, but there definitely are. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Where are we stand with this one? The obvious one, probably going to be Fnatic number one. Get the corporation in 10th as well. Oh, yes, yes. So yeah. that's that's the bare minimum starting okay. point. <laughs> but I have no clue where to go from there. <laughs> Heretics mm. maybe in ninth. Yeah, I was gonna BBL. say Carmine did beat BBL. So that yeah, is the thing on, that BBL, happened. BBL took a map off Fnatic. They've 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 consistently outside of that very first game, like had yeah, had yeah. performance where you're like, eh, that could have that could have gone differently. And they're 0 3. But anyway. Mm, yeah. Um I I know that Navi haven't exactly shown it, but they belong in that number two spot. Yeah, that nobody it. else has been good enough to overtake them consistently at this point. I mean, and also if you're doubting Navi, you're trolling because you know that they're going to turn up once it gets to the more important games later on down the road. They're just doing a bit of silly time. Yeah, they've done this before. Yeah, they like a little bit of experimentation, and then uh, and then they they stop messing around, and then they dominate but uh yeah that bothers me though like because <laughs> i i agree we have to rate them higher but like i morally object to like 90 percent of the things they're playing 
Yes. Like yeah, yeah. every, no, every single comp, four picks make perfect sense. And then there's one thing they lock in that is just like they went to like a random number generator and then it just like locked in whatever it was going to be. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, in, in, in the interview afterwards, we're going to have to like explain how this makes sense. But no, between each and every one of us, this does not make sense. Um, yeah. So Wait, you don't like the scene at your on Fracture? I actually, they I actually didn't. quite like that one. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't like. Okay, like wh why they weren't orb farming. I saw them use the fade plus Yoru one time in like yeah. the second and they had to last it, like, round, for, like, six rounds in a row. I was like waiting and waiting, and then finally yeah. it happened, and I was like, let's go. But that was the only. The TPs they had, were like they okay. They had far more ideas with the TPs than they did last time when Angel played the Yoru. They they were actually coordinating. Well, yeah, stuff the, the Breeze Yoru was ass. So. No, 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 no. They ran Fracture Yoru a long time ago. When really? Angel was playing Yoru, yeah, yeah, and he was just doing only, they ran it to do one teleport that went from tree up into um, into stairs? tower, and then, well, no, up the stairs, it goes up the stairs if uh. you put it at enough of an angle, and C CNED did that, but he also did a lot of other stuff, and I was like, hmm, they've actually, you know, they, they've worked on their one idea, there's now four or five ideas here. But the rest yeah, of their comp second. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but still, yeah, second, place. second, I think. Can we put a tear break? Between Fnatic and Na'Vi. That's deserved, isn't it? Yes, agreed. Yeah. Between those two teams? Yeah, currently. Yeah, Fnatic's in a league of their own. Yeah, I, th I think Fnatic can make the argument so much harder about, like, they. I don't think they're going to lose to anybody this season. That, <laughs> that yeah. Good, what are you okay? Guaranteed. <laughs> I think the tear break is missing. I have to. Oh, uh, there's, there's no tear breaks. breaks. There's no, no, no tear, tear breaks. breaks. Also, there's only oh. 10 teams. You don't need tear breaks. True. Yeah, they're just all <laughs> in the same <laughs> league. They've been Bala pilled. No, no, no. Bala, go watch the episode last week if you haven't watched it with the NA power rankings. Bala made a great compelling argument as to why tear breaks are useless. Or something like that. And then that. immediately oh, got proven wrong. We're one. literally, we're literally power fanatic. ranking the teams. Well, Anyways. yeah. Can we power We're not rank? doing Guys, a tier we, list. We, we, but tiers, uh, tiers are nice uh, still. All right, who's uh, who's number three though? Because I think yes, there's a number, serious foot. discussion here. Number Ooh. three is a foot. Number three is an interesting <laughs> conversation. Bro, get your foot out Get those camera. dogs out of here. Get that shit out of here. What are you doing? Get yeah. the, the dogs away, Ender. You, listen, oh. already getting demonetized. And I <laughs> put of his, put of his dirty socks. <laughs> Say that it's for only the, fans. All right, go. Um, it's either foot or giants, isn't it? Those are the candidates. Aren't the, they? Probably. Yeah. I, w I would have said foot vitality, giants. but I mean, maybe vitality. You could. Yeah, I think an you, argument but... for vitality as well. I don't but... know. I am so foot pilled that it's just not even. It's not even reasonable. Let's... And also, foot just smoked vitality 2-0. Yeah. I can't, in good faith, put vitality over them. But are they really going to be the dark horse? I don't. I don't think. I've... I think yeah, it's exactly. more so giants. No. Same. But are we power? We're power ranking them like right now. Who's yes. the better teams? Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah. I don't feel like I've seen enough to say that they're going to consistently be like over giants, over vitality, over whatever. I. I, I think vitality is a slight off day, but I'd still put them higher. But giants, giants just looked good in the last. Giants has looked good in every game. They're one and two, but they've looked good in yeah. every game. They played mm -hmm. Fnatic and Navi. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I think it probably maybe not the be very first map of the Giants Fnatic game, but everything else has been. Yeah, that was okay. Fnatic Icebox. Be fair. Yeah, sure. But also, uh, it was I'm, Fnatic with a sub. I'm I'm pretty down with throwing foot in at fourth though. Same. Yeah. By I the way, I uh, re out of the tier breaks. Yeah, that's all goes <clears throat> goes a one up though. <laughs> between one and two. Yeah. Um. Then who is it? Vitality. Then we can get vitality. vitality. I, I think you have Are to start adding Team liquid? liquid to this conversation. Yeah. Uh, I would. I'd be fine with this. Six Liquid. Then yeah. yeah, I'd be fine with this. I think Liquid are going to end up rising up those ranks, though. I think probably. I think they look like they're making some serious improvements. A heretics. At the bottom, like with BBL, but I mean, like, a heretics below BBL. I I've seen some like decent performances from heretics. I actually thought that the split that they played against, I know it's against Carmen Core. Carmen. No, but... I've seen some horrible stuff from heretics, though. Yeah, they this have. This is a team that only does well when Kellogg's is 
doing well, it seems. And even when he does do well, it's it's not even a guarantee that they'll win rounds. So is Heretics below BBL? Yeah, yeah. I suppose that's I not think so. unreasonable. Their, their ascent versus Fnatic was just a crime against humanity. <laughs> No, it was, that was the worst thing ever. They had no way, like, they had no one that could, like, actually, like, fight Durka, right? They're playing, like, Phoenix instead of Jet, and, oh, my God, that, that, was, that was one of the worst maps I've seen. Yeah, can we swap BBL and Heretics, then? And then, I think the tier break goes between 7 and 8 here. Uh, yeah, I don't want another, Koi under there. Yeah. Then there's another tier break between 9 and 10. <laughs> yeah, I'm down for that. You're really, you're really slamming that in there. They're just in okay. their own. Do you think Carmen and Heretics were on the same tier when you watched them play and Heretics 13 2 would them? No. Yeah. All right. Okay. This well, makes this sense was... to me, though. Because, like, I, I, I do see there being a lot of flexibility between 2 and 7, unironically. Um, like, especially, like, the further we get in the season. Um, like, I think there, I think Giants and Foot can challenge Navi. I think that. Koi and Liquid, like, yeah, it sucks to see them at six and seven because they have had some good moments. Um, but I, I could see a world where there's like a lot of shuffle within here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, not definitely. really in eight through ten and not in one. I don't feel comfortable with with this power ranking. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like, uh, like you said, there's there's could be a lot of shuffle in that middle of the pack. But I will say this is one of the least aggressive, most agreed upon power rankings we have hey, ever done. Don't worry. America's is coming, brother. <laughs> <laughs> America's Justice for very foot, easy. though. Justice for foot. I'm a believer. Yeah, all I the mean, way. We all seem to be on the same page, which and is The thing is, if you, were this happy, if you were this fine with my hot take of Furia being fourth last week, we wouldn't have had any problems, Bren, but... This is this. So no, no, you did the, the, the same door, thing for foot. You're just like, okay, we're chilling, and no, you know, it, it's good. I watched foot. I thought. So I thought you're telling me you didn't watch Furia? No, didn't watch Fury. I watched <laughs> Fury. I was working the fucking broadcast. I watched he thought Furia. MLBR was the second best team in America. Since <laughs> I watched Furia. I saw them struggle against Crew. In my head, Crew were the worst team in America. I was like, nah, dude, you guys are fucking way too high up in Furia. They push Fnatic on one map. Nah. I'm not getting on this topic again. We're, we're talking no, we're about the EMA power rankings. Later. We are getting on it. <laughs> we're done. This is it. Locking it in. Uh, yeah. Bring it up. I think we're good. I closed it. We're lo we it's locked, locked it in. in. It's locked in. I can we locked it in. in. It's done. Okay. Now, moving on quite swiftly over because we have so much to cover with this one to our Pacific predictions. The reason we're doing our Pacific predictions, our week four Pacific predictions before we do any sort of recap is because... We don't have a lot of time, and also uh, we're covering three regions. So we're kind of just going to be combining this one into the matches to watch for the week, doing our preds, talk about you know a bit of why we're predding them. I'm sure we'll talk about the previous matches up in, in, in the predictions as well as it comes up. And we will be doing the power rankings at some point as well, as a note, for Pacific region Take as well. Get. Yeah, we will be doing it at some point, and we'll be having a big argument over it, and we'll, we'll, we'll all be arguing, and we'll... Burn bridges and we'll lose friendships. Anyway, first match, <laughs> Talon versus Global Esports is the first matchup that we're going to be predicting. And this one, it's all G fighting. It's all G fighting. There's no way. I think absolutely. No way. Talon have been inting. I know, but guys, we've cur we cursed GE literally last week. I like. know, I know, I know. They can't lose this one. They just can't. There's no know. way. There's, There's no, no way. way. When Talon are pulling out triple duelist comps, dude, I mean, they're playing triple duelist and not even putting Patty on a duelist. Dude, like, Pat, don't. Oh, holy fuck. I've got, <laughs> forgot, I've got to, oh I've got to pop off on Talon. I've got to pop off because dude. this team is hyper trolling, hyper omega trolling. Their comps are poo just to start off with. Just poo. I mean, running, running the gecko that looked awful, running triple duelist looked awful. Pat has taken a year off the game and you've brought him back and he's played a different agent in every map he's played. Six maps, six agents, no duelists, two smokes players, two initiators, two sentinels. He's looked shite at a lot of them, even when he's been putting up good numbers. <laughs> and he's also failed to put up good numbers on quite a couple of them as well. So it's just, why have they made his job so difficult? Why do they think he's some kind of like God tier hyperflex when he's come back to the game after taking such a long time off? His decision-making is really poor when you're watching him in on these agents. And it is not 
easy when he's playing such a range of stuff. I mean, they've just, they're playing a rotating six-person roster as well. They've just taken their chances of being a good team in Pacific and just gone, woohoo, bye-bye, down the toilet. <laughs> yeah. It's also, your, they've literally run every single troll yeah. you can possibly run. Like, every and single Rainer. one. Yeah. Trolling. It's Wait, just... did they run the Rainer? I On the I Triple Duelist comp, yeah. No, 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 it was the map was... after. Oh, fuck. They played, the... so on Split, they played Jet, Yoru, Rays, and then to, you know, finish it off, of course, Breach and Astra. And then on Pearl, <laughs> they course, picked yeah. Jet and Reyna. Oh. Okay, okay. You oh, guys yeah, are they right. They, you guys they are picked right. five duelists in two maps. Yeah, that's <laughs> insane. That's actually insane. Um, Global Esports, I think, as well, quite fraudulent. Their, their recent matchup versus Zeta. You gotta stop saying this. It makes me sound like we're shitting on them. No, but... but, but Genuinely, like they are, they're not in three, but I feel like out of all the teams, they didn't, they don't deserve that. Like they played close matches in, in almost all their matches or maps that they played. And the most recent one as well, I felt like they got quite unlucky that they ran into a Zeta division that had an uptick in performance in terms of how they were playing, like a big uptick in terms of their performance. Like they, they still a common sit. Zeta division problems, like their Pearl attack side being the slowest thing in the world. Like, just honestly, you could fall asleep to it. It's that level of it. It's, uh, it's they're so slow on their, on their attack side. But um, the rest of the maps, God almighty. I mean, Depp sometimes just has these moments where he will fluctuate between looking like an absolute god and just not having good games. And they just caught him on a good day, um, which he was, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge difference maker, I think, for Zeta Division when they are so slow to make decisions. Um, just with the, their, their playstyle inherently. But if they find a man advantage, they do capitalize off of it. It's just often they, they don't have it. Often they end up finding themselves in a 5v5 and they're coming down with 30 seconds left. But uh, still expect Global Esports to win, no? I do, yeah. I, I'm a bit disappointed that they didn't win last week, to be honest. <clears throat> I think that that was a great opportunity for them to get a win over a team that was struggling. And... Yeah, they were, they were like, what, one round away, essentially, from winning 2-0, because the second map ended up going to, to OT. But they had to kind of struggle even to get to that spot by, you know, the classic ascent of, oh, we really just need a couple of attack rounds. Surely we can get some attack rounds. And then it doesn't happen, and you're just getting torn apart by the defending protocols and by, um, by their jet as well. But... I think that's actually had a pretty bad effect. They're zero and three now after having games against two opponents that they definitely could have had wins against. They definitely could have beaten T1. They definitely could have beaten Zeta. And now they're probably not looking in, uh, at getting playoffs, if we're going to be honest. They have to try and get into the sixth place spot. I guess there's a lot of teams that are really struggling currently. I mean, currently the seventh team in Pacific is RRQ, that's, who's one and two. Yeah. So I it's think, not it's not great out there, but no, but set I, but I think it poorly. should be. Listen, it's much harder for them, admittedly, but I think playoffs are something that they could still aim for. They they, they need I think to they win are this better game. Than those, they are better than those the, the the bottom four of those bottom four teams that we are currently looking at. They are at the top, and then I think that they've shown a level of play that could win against a lot of their opponents as well that are going to be above them. Maybe, I mean, Paper X as well, they're unfortunate to be playing Paper X quite late because that team does seem to be getting a lot of their stuff together in terms of how they're playing and they made improvements. But uh, yeah, this week at least should be a win. Should be. Should be. Okay. Next matchup, Dead Nation Focus Me versus Zeta Division. Battle of the Japanese orgs, battle of the Japanese teams. And for this one, we've all gone Zeta Division. Oh. Unanimous. And have we had a disagreement today? Oh. No, I don't no. think so. I don't it's think so. Right. Yes. There's some. Uh, I, I think uh, NA might be a little spicy though. The Americas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Zeta. I, I will just say this as well, Kurt. I pulled the thing that's going to get us demonetized. You can play if you want. I don't know if it will get us demonetized. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, I don't want to get demonetized. From, it's. I don't know if it will. It's a clip from Dragon Ball. It's when fucking. Vegeta's toy saying, and something just snapped, something inside of me. I didn't care anymore. <laughs> I didn't care about Kakarot. And it's fucking, that's Depp in this match, uh, in their previous match 
versus fucking G G as well because that that guy has such high peaks, such high uh, such low lows as well from time to time. But generally speaking, it, he doesn't find openings when he's playing Jet as much. But when he is, it makes the 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 slower play style where Zeta just feels so almost indecisive, where they can't grab advantages for their slow play and they're left scrambling with with no time on the clock. Makes it so much easier for them when he is popping off. And so if he continues his performance, should be Zeta taking it. But also, I can see a world where detonation upset them. Uh, Did you see um, the interview that Suggest had with, I can't remember exactly who it was, but it was a Korean, um, uh, Korean news site. And they asked Suggest what the big problems were at the moment with detonation focus me. And he said uh, that one of the biggest problems was with their IGL. And then they asked to clarify, wait, do you mean Anthem? That's the problem? And he said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wow. Yep. That's absolutely so, At least they're aware. Said. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. He did mention that they didn't think... He also said their mechanics weren't very good. <laughs> but I, I, I thought that the direct call out Bruh. of their IGL was a bit more. But it's just the only Korean on the team. How do you isolate yourself even harder? Jesus Christ! <laughs> Maybe you just didn't think it would get translated into Japanese. <laughs> It's like I'm safe here. I can say what I want. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, but unanimous. Anybody want to, anything else to say or we're just going to move on? No, it's a playstyle diff. That's it. Okay. <laughs> okay. T1 versus Gen G. Next matchup that we're going to be predicting. It's better now. And better. I think this one could be quite close. <laughs> and okay, predictions. Brevis going for Gen G here. From? And Bala as the lone T1 supporter predictor. Yeah. Uh, T1 beat Paper X the other time. Carpe's looking better. Everybody's looking better. I'm just, I'm a Genji hater, to be honest. I keep watching them. I'm like, dude, King is just bailing them out over and over and over and over and over and over. Oh. Sure. Sure. Sorry, this you said something weird at the beginning of this. You said T1 beat Paper X that other time. What do you mean? Did they not beat Paper X? Am I trolling? No, you're, they lost? you're trolling. They oh, lost right. The I'm a dumbass. X. The, the, the loss of paper X. By the loss of paper X. All right, I had I had this prepared. Okay, I, I debated you. <laughs> <laughs> I have just been testing, debated. just testing. <laughs> Dumbfounded. They they lost the paper X, and it was real bad. But it was a playstyle diff as well. Playstyle diff. <laughs> you guys all uh... thought paper X was gonna lose, but it's just T one's just not experienced against that level of aggression. Gen is a more standard team. Okay, T one's gonna come in with a nice execute, just like Gen G is. It's gonna be a nice, good old brawl. It's gonna be a very good game. T1 win. win. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I do kind of agree with that. It did look like T1 were just getting absolutely diffed in their game against Paper X. It was a really weird game. They had something subbed in instead of Benkai for map one. And I think Devai ended up calling for them because he's normally the secondary IGL. And you watch them on the minimap and they just, they, they run into an area. They like run into B at the beginning, get a pick. And then, or they kill someone like on, on the other side of the map and they just... Just all five of their players just making these massive mid-round rotates and just running into the other site or running into B. Um, it was it was definitely strange, and there were a lot of moments like Forsaken got an ace just out of nowhere playing Killjoy. Something got a crazy few kills in the round afterwards by pushing a smoke that you should always get punished for. They, the, they were just getting pulled game. over by better players. I, but also, their pull game was a symptom, and this is the case of a lot of teams where they copy a comp but don't know how it works because their their comp they're playing the double controller comp uh, on that map of pull, and it's very strong at B retakes, yeah. and they were constantly either wasting a util earlier to not have um, smokes up for the retakes or just misusing it. Like Zeta, Zeta, listen, great player. But his walls were actually hard trolling and losing them rounds from multiple instances where he was like, he all you gotta do is wall straight across where the Viper wall is up. When the Viper when the Viper when your Viper doesn't have charge, basically, when you're playing a retake. Like you 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 try and partition it off so you can fight super heavy, regain that horse control, and then you can take that portion of the site and then you can begin to fight if you're trying to defuse. He was creating some wacky walls, like some actual like snake squiggles like to try and create like these little openings and and 
their opponents were just swinging through it and taking fights. It was it was incredibly odd to see them play it on the retake, but it was purely just brute force. Uh, yeah, brute yeah, force going to run them down. And uh, and I think they didn't understand how the comp work on their on their retakes because it was just B hits, B hits, B hits. And, and were... I think I think part of the comp as well, and uh, not the fracture comp, but I think part of the pro comp switch is them trying to find something that'll be able to slow down paper X because that's not what they were running in the prior weeks either. Their, their pearl mm -hmm. stuff with the, the neon was okay. And then once they swapped Saya back onto whatever he was playing on that map was very good. Still, um, they lost a lock in on it, but like, no, they didn't. Yes, they did. Um, but it was still, it was still good. Like the fundamental of that before they swapped to this Harbor Viper, I think that was definitely trying to get up against paper X, which they needed to, because I don't think there was a world and, where they could challenge when Paper X is playing that aggressively because they're just a new team and they don't have that experience. They even have inexperienced player like Carpe trying to deal with that level of aggression is it's too much. So anyways. Yeah. I'll be honest, my entire prediction was based off of the LCK finals result between Gen G <laughs> and T1, uh, in which uh, Faker was embarrassed and Gen G took home the title. Um, but I do think that the uh, trucks and actually the horse-drawn carriage the T1 fans sent to protest T1. I'm not joking. That's real. They sent a horse-drawn carriage with signs to the T1 headquarters. I think that's going to be in the head of the T1 players uh, on the Valorant <laughs> side oh. and uh, interrupt their thought process. I think the, their calling in game may end up being affected in this I next agree. week's games. Just, okay. <laughs> I, I will say for Gen G, I watched their game yesterday their most recent one versus team secret and genji were always a bit of a mystery to me because i felt like they we hadn't seen them get tested they played two of the weaker teams um up until that point and team secret are one of those teams that um you, you can't really sleep on them actually they, they're actually I, I think showing a lot of promise in in pacific and so it was the first real chance to see genji up against a team like that and test them and um they were matching them a lot i thought that they they had a lot prepped their haven was odd but it was good. So it was. I, I went from watching EMEA VODs, which is very slow teams, to watching Genji's Haven, which is them making a decision on what they wanted to do and rushing within like the first 10 seconds, 20 seconds. And very unusual for Haven. Usually you want to be a bit more cautious and slow play uh, because, you know, you, you can just be running into a trap or whatnot. But they, uh, they were running it down, getting quite fortunate at times in terms of, of where they were picking. But they clearly had thought out and planned their execs onto sites really well. They were incredibly drilled with it. And um, to the point where it was it was looking much better comparative to like Team Secret with how they were playing it. They were uncomfortable on it. And um, I, they, they had very good understandings of how to play their comp as well. They played the double controller comp, which is a bit slower on Fracture, which I think a lot of teams mess up when they're trying to play that. They played it in a weird way. They were giving up a lot of map control early on, but... Um, they they understood the win cons of it, which is like a lot of slow play trying to slowly take the map control with, with smokes, uh, which I think bodes well because I'm watching a lot of teams in Pacific that copy comps and they don't understand the win cons. They don't really understand how they should be playing it. But Gen G, I think, were um, they were pushed a little bit in terms of the mechanics, and uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> did you spread misinformation? I did. Apparently the horse wasn't about T1, but I saw it on Twitter, so I assumed it was real. <laughs> Wait, you're talking about the escaped horse? No, I maybe. I don't know. Oh, there I don't was know, an, guys. Was a good when story. I was in Korea, there was an escaped horse in Seoul, and it like, made the news. Because it's just so <laughs> unusual. It was just an escaped horse running around. Anyway, that's my, that, that's my monologue on why Gen G will win. That's what I Pretty think. Monologue. Last one. You almost made me switch my pred. Almost. I, yeah, I think they've got I'm a pretty good chance. I'm more convinced by the LCK finals, but to each their own. Paper X versus DRX. We've all got DRX for this. It's unanimous. And uh, I think this makes a lot of sense. I'm not, I'm not convinced by the recent uptick in performance by Paper X to think that there nope. is nope. upset potential here. I think that there could be an upset, but I don't think it's a high chance because um, Paper X were, they were gifted some, some easy easy rounds they weren't really, they weren't really pressed at all i don't think too much, they just much, haven't so. done anything to fix their fundamental problems they yeah. have instead like patched over it with um adding even more firepower i mean i say even more as if they're a super team but we talked about this last week they're really not they're getting outmatched by drx even if something is playing um so yeah don't really have faith in this yeah paper is still trolling i don't i don't care 
Yeah. <laughs> Even though I predated them last week and I was correct, but okay, they're trolling. Yep, inclined to agree. All right, unanimous as it is. Let's move on to the most clouded region in Valorant. It's America's time. Let's talk Americas. Yippee! Ooh. Yippee! 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 Could Furia be the best in Americas? Now I'll start this by saying I own apologies to everybody. I made a prediction. I, 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 I said it with my chest. I thought that MIBR was better than Furia. Um, at the time, I based that off of um, previous matches played, the expectations for it, gameplay that I watched with my own two eyes. I used my critical <laughs> thinking skills. And I combined all of that to come to the conclusion oh, wow. that I thought that MIBR would be the better team over Furia. Now, what I should have done was um, actually just become one with the hive mind and be a bit of a sheep and just go along with the rest of you. Um, because the amount of shit I got for that, <laughs> admittedly, I was very wrong. I apologize for that. But uh, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing the same. Listen, if it, 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 I'm going to keep doing the same. I'm not, I'm not stopping. I'm going right. to keep... I'm so you I'm said you're keep... sorry, but you're going to keep doing it. And not only did you say you're yeah, sorry... Yeah, I'm, you... I'm going to keep forming my own opinions. But yes. yeah, why, are, why are you sorry? You shouldn't be sorry. People that are chastising well, you over this are just... Well, people... Little... Maybe. People are spreading a lot of misinformation. They're saying that apology, I hate Brazil bro. because because I yeah. I mean, you do. You hate well, Brazil, bit. so you. I hate Brazil because I think I thought that MIBR made in Brazil was better than <laughs> Furia. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. True. Sure. Yep. Okay. Well. Uh, anyway, could Fury be the best in America? That's what <laughs> we're talking about because right now, leading the standings, this team is looking hot. They got high peaks. Their, uh, their recent matchup, I think they looked uh, particularly good as well. They were playing they playing quite well. And I think showcasing that um, they really can push a lot of these teams. And their upcoming matchup is going to be an interesting one to look at as well. Because that is versus Loud, another team that's been playing very close maps, dropping maps as well to a lot of teams right now. Best team in Brazil, but maybe not for much longer. Who knows? Ooh. They're playing spooky. Uh, I mean, what, what this was are insane. these... What are these shots that Khalil is hitting? He, he's currently at the top of the stats for Americas, and he's looking like the best player in the world. Like, the last two weeks, it just looks <laughs> like he's insane. He's just reached an absurd new level, like, playing, like, premium yay. It's, it's ridiculous. On controller. Yeah, yeah on, on controller. I mean, hitting entries, he hit that jump peak on Shy twice in two different positions. Deliberately aiming for it as well. It's not some kind of crazy flick. Like, he had his crosshair exactly where it would be, he just hits the shot. He's winning, what was it, 1v2s repeatedly or something. Yep. He's winning clutches, closing out rounds, just playing like a god. I don't want to be a hater, but that jump peak was kind of easy. It oh, was oh, so oh, wide bro, bro. that like he saw that guy for forever. I don't, like, I, I don't want to discredit your whole oh. thing, but like the, that's the only clip I've you seen. You hit that with a Vandal, so. Ender. All right, you hit that with a Vandal. Good luck. Good uh, yeah, luck. if I could, then I'd be playing in America's, not casting EMEA, so... <laughs> you, you hit that with a Vandal twice in one map as well. It's not even... It wasn't even just twice. He was hitting those jump peaks against other... Like, on other angles, too. He hit one on the close angle, he hit one on the back hall, and then he was hitting that shit and okay, okay. did everything. The guy's crazy. Yeah, Holy. Khalil... Is adding that extra element to a team. Like you think of some of the best teams in the world and uh, and their kind of performances as well. The the controller role is typically one where you you know you'll place somebody on, but you don't have as much impact. It's not something that you can really single handedly win rounds on as much unless you are an absolute superstar player. But Khalil was playing like that in this up in this last match. He was single handedly winning rounds. He was solo playing that B long angle. He was like just opening up. Killjoy taken care of. Guys, you can split into B. Don't worry. I've got it handled. He was clutching. He was popping off. And they've got the additional firepower of the rest of the team. I mean, it's not just the Khalil show. I think this entire team is actually stacked in terms of uh, the talent that they've got available to them. They're, they're, if they keep this performance up with consistency, they are looking like they are contenders to just keep, again, taking wins against other top teams. I mean, are they going to be... Could they be the best in America? It's a bit... You know, a bit of a we literally find title, out this week. No, I but... don't think it is. Like we literally find out this week if they beat Loud, they've beaten like almost all of the top contenders for that spot, right? I mean, uh, what is this from Khalil? Super again? energy, yeah, pretty much. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, apart from NRG, but beating Loud and Leviathan, uh, yeah, crazy. <laughs> I I think what 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 I'm trying to think about for this this question is if like the level of Khalil can be 
the same uh, going forward, then yeah, sure. If there's like no drop off in performance, but I expect it to be coming, and then I don't really put them above it, above like loud, above Leviton, whatever. But the thing is too, right now, I can't see an argument for any of these teams to be above them based off the performances that we've seen so far. So right now, I'm in my mind trying my, I don't think they're the best, but I can't find an argument for the other teams to be better, if, if that makes any sense. Okay, let me let me hit you with the crazy Khalil like stats too, because even before this, um, he was on my radar heavily because his first, okay, again, fucking stats nerge moment about to happen. <laughs> but, you know, I, I collect all of the stats and put them into databases before we go into big tournaments. And for Champs 2022, and actually, I noticed this beforehand too, but this is the one I've got, you know, next to me. 75% first dual win rate is ridiculous. And that's what Khalil was putting up repeatedly, tournament after tournament. And so I was thinking to myself, why does this guy, like, I was watching the VODs, and he used to play very passively. He used to be quite a passive player, and anyone that would challenge him, he would be winning that duel right at the beginning. And because he was positioning himself in such safe spots, he was always taking favored fights. He does not play like that anymore. He is, I mean, this round, teleporting in to turn the round around. In the previous clip that we watched, pushing down mid, turning the round around. But he's still got that insane skill, and he always was mega consistent by playing very safely. And now he seems like he's added that like twist into his game, where he's able to still find the same value, but play in much more aggressive positions. I've never seen him being a, an inconsistent player. He's always been a solid rock for the teams that are playing, but now he's a rolling avalanche. Now he's actually going forwards into your space and ripping it away from you. I think it's it's crazy. It, it should be more difficult for him to keep him up, keep this up, because he's not playing those like hyper advantageous duels he used to be, but he's just doing it. He's doing it all. He's nutty. Yep. Agreed. 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 Uh, is there really much more to say about Fury? I mean, we could talk about Livia Dunn. I, I yeah. Well, I'd every... like to ask Riot to start scheduling their games better because all of Furia's games have started after 1 a.m. for me. So I have not <laughs> Unlucky. Unlucky. They, are, they are very, very good, though. And they've demonstrated a decent map pool, too. Like, being able to beat Leviathan on Ascent, I think is crazy. I just thought that was a guarantee. Like, I, I didn't really believe that Fury was going to be able to beat Leviathan at all because... Even if they went on Icebox, what are they going to do on the rest of the map pool? They just can't win, surely. And mm -hmm. Leviathan have looked fantastic on Ascent. They ended up losing it here. After Once nine, more to... Half. Yeah. Ridiculous. It, it, was, yeah. it was crazy. And their first half, I thought they were about to fall apart, too. The amount of... They, they, they did, like, the save timeout on attack side, like, three times. Where they start saving, like, 40 seconds, and they're just talking to each other. I thought they were going to fall apart. And then they do that. It's it's crazy. It was crazy. I don't. I don't. I think Leviathan's ascent specifically. Like I feel like they're not. They haven't really worked on it as much in the past uh, as they have in the past because they're still trying to do like a lot of their like out of timeout plays or um, surprise plays are them trying to get a spam from Cat or whatever, and it's just not hitting the same because people know what's coming. I guess there was the adjustment where they had that KJ Molly coming in as well. Yeah, that was uh, pretty that, good. That one time that was pretty good. But I think it's it's kind of readable in that sense. And yeah, I don't know. I think they need to work on it more. Fury is a great team, but the fact that they get battered on one of their best maps, not battered, but they lose on one of their best maps when they've been good on attack side in the past, it's kind of odd to me. Yeah. I think there's a good chance of an upset against Loud. I think... If you consider the map pool the way it, the way it will shake out, I think their icebox will probably be quite even. Um, even though Loud have a lot of good ideas with the comp that they play, but yeah, what's been showcased by Fury so far, the biggest, like you said, Josh, the biggest thing that was up in the air was their map pool, and I think that's kind of been cleared up to a degree with just how good their ascent was. Added something a little bit extra to their to the arsenal. So, um, yeah, I think that's looking quite sweet. Let's uh, let's talk about. More America's teams. Woo! Wow! Woo! I love woo. Uh, this this next team. This one's a great one. Cloud Nine, who we thought as our Cloud Nine, who we thought I can read our Cloud Nine, who we thought they were. Um, 
100%. Interesting, interesting <laughs> team, this one, because of they? the... Who did we think they were? I don't know <laughs> who they were. I mean, is it, is it unfair to say that they we thought they were falling apart at the seams and like would end Absolutely. up really struggling? I think that that's pretty reasonable. Expectations are very low. Perform my expectations. Yeah. Yeah, this team, the way I see Cloud9 at the moment is a team that's, um, they've stabilized the ship. You know what I mean? They've got a team together that can take wins against, um, I would say, bottom to middle of the pack. I would say that they could potentially, on a given day, do some damage, take some wins. Against top tier teams, maybe not so, but uh, it is outstanding the level of which they've managed to catch up players like Rooney and Jake into this kind of system and bring them up to speed. And, um, you know, a couple of missteps here and there, but I was, uh, when, when you introduce two new players into, into a brand new system and you're putting them on the stage and you're telling them, all right, go on, perform, you know, they should be failing at every twist and turn. Yeah. It shouldn't be the case where you're seeing Rooney pop off and get a 4K on what? with a Sheriff and Eco rounds. And, you know, listen, Jake has been, I think, quite acceptable as like kind of just the, the smoke support player, but his util timing has been... You know, relatively good and i think a large part of that is because a lot of the load has been carried by the, the veteran core the three players that remained leave Seppa yeah. and zelsis i think I, have been doing a significant amount with that i also think that just the system that they had with vanity was very loose in the first place so it's kind of it's kind of given them the ability for zeppa for zelsis for leaf to just kind of call things a lot more on the fly which is a lot of uh, like a lot of teams try to strive for that but because it's been such a factor for cloud nine for so long it's much easier for them to put things together like that and for two players to fit in something like that and for two players to uh end up feeling like they're like they have really good chemistry together because it's just those types of micro plays that they rely on so much stuff like that where they're just flashing I mean, deep that's in the so middle. good though i i really like that because it requires Zeppa and rooney to both be ready to swing off the flash you know what i mean like they they've got themselves into the, the, the audibles that they're calling, their new players are on the same page as well. And it's mostly Rooney. Jake plays quite safely and just is there to, you know, put down the utility, make sure that he's not, you know, losing rounds, sticks tight to people. Yeah. He's had some decent performances, but I'm really, really impressed by how well they're playing together. I, I think that's, that's also because Rooney's IGLing too. So, like, when somebody calls, yeah. he's co signing it, right? So, he's yeah. always going to be able to get in position for it. And that's the type of thing that, yeah, I think the, the system has done them a great service. But also, mad credit to them because Rooney, his breach util on, on he just completely neutralized mm -hmm. Aspas in that first game. Like, the guy couldn't find anything because of the breach util. It was just perfectly timed, perfectly placed, and he's a beast. It I was, was so amazing. Pogging, I was pogging out watching this because, like, even this hold right here, by the way, that's the angle you have to hold if you don't have uh, someone watching a main. Um, like, I love that. But overall... I just think that C9 used to be, like, at their peak, I think they're actually the best team at Split in the world. Like, I think they were, like, one of the first teams was, like, really utilizing Breach, Raze, Astra to, like, an amazing level. Um, and, like, defensively, they would, like, fully give away mid control, but you would never be able to make it through mail. Like, you would just get ruined by utility. So the fact that they're then playing in a similar way with Rooney on the Breach and just, it seemed so seamless to me right off the rip. Um... That again, they had like different ways of shutting off mail and and, and vents as areas on the map on their defensive side. I was just beyond thrilled. It went above like Rooney having a couple of like insane rounds. Um, I just think that like util wise, setup wise, um, on their defense primarily, I was like, yes, this is what I always remember from C9 in the past, and this is why I think every team should be playing breach on split. It just re reaffirmed that in my mind. They did kind of fall to pieces on map two and three against Loud, but I don't think that that's something that you can hold against them because, like I said, I was expecting them to be like potentially going zero and six to begin this, um, to begin this split, and I certainly wasn't anticipating them taking a map off Loud to begin with. I think it's quite likely that Cloud9 were expecting the Viper comp to be coming out from Loud here and then yeah. pivoting back to their normal comp really threw them off because they looked so uh, set in what they were bringing to split and started off with that 7-0 start just immediately out of the gates. I had, you know, all of these great things to get them to the mid-round or get them to a post plant that they can then pivot a bit from and be able to win. Uh, and that wasn't there at all on Ascent, and that's kind of started the spiral um, that, that, you know, 
yeah. ascended again on the third map. But I think MCE will probably be able to start building that map pool out a little more. For sure. Yeah. I, I think as well, like on Split, they're able to disrupt the game plan from Wild, whereas the other two maps, they can't because it's yeah. much more solid, right? The Gecko just, it looked so good in the first week against MIBR on Split. Like it looked very good. Um, and then here you're just getting breach done then you're not able to do anything with the wingman or the dizzy like that sadak was trying to combo together like that sort of thing was not working so disrupting the game plan worked really well for for them on split whereas the other times it was loud just doing the normal stuff and being happy with it how much yeah. of the leaf flexing have c9 been doing because i i don't remember off the top of my head but i know it was a big thing like towards the beginning of last year and then they stopped it towards the end he's still doing the same um, yeah he's doing a ton of it I mean, Which he really just KJ hasn't played. And jet this, this I think series. the Jet is the first time we've seen him play Jet, isn't it? Uh, this... uh, he used to play it a lot. Like, back oh, on, yes, like, sorry, but I mean, stuff. this this year, I think Yeah, yeah, but like, time. I'm excited to see that. Because, again, like, I, I always liked um, seeing him in that role. So, yeah. I like it. Yeah, they look good. They look like they they could punch, they can upset, and they're not going to be bottom feeders. Not going to be a team that you... You know, like God Almighty, Cloud Nine. We'll get to watch this team again, and they're just falling. Which, by the way, increases the stocks for MCE astronomically. A GM that can be put into a rough budget position and still give you a middle of the pack team to root for is a fucking diamond, an unbelievable find. What kind of what kind of team would not want? A GM where they can say, here's half the budget that everybody else has. Build me a team that's competent. P Potter literally had an interview recently talking about like, um, you know, the. I think she said something like, when you compare apples to apples, um, we've actually put together quite a competitive team, you know, based on the, the salary that we're spending. And I was just thinking to myself like, mm, when you think about what a shit position Cloud9 has been in, that's the team where I would be making that kind of argument. Like apples to but apples, other teams are put in that position. MCE bells them out. A lot of other GMs just can't. That's, I would still say coaches, Leaf, rather, Zephyr, and Zelsus are commanding reasonable salaries, though. Oh, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. But my point being that it's they not an entirely budget. Massive. Team. No, no, it's not entirely budget, but it's a you know half budget. It's a uh, it's a yeah. team that's undergone insane changes that you wouldn't expect them to recover from. And he scouted a, a brand new IGL that nobody else had on their radar, who's integrated perfectly into the team and is executing their game plans really well in the server along with a collegiate player, for God's sake, who's holding his own at tier one. It's absurd. It is quite crazy. Um, shout out to MC. He's a real one. I don't know <laughs> if he's a real one. I don't really know him that well. But um, <laughs> next team. MC is <laughs> fake. You heard it here first. Yeah, no yeah, idea. I don't know if he's MC. a real one. I'm assuming he is. But next team, 100 Thieves. Bouncing back the decisive win over EG. Um, there was a lot of doubters, no? Around, I think, surfacing around this game, I think. I was doubting. Yeah. People saying that, you know, listen, it's going to be EG winning over 100 Thieves, 100 Thieves are a poo team. I don't really understand where people were coming at from that logic, but I think that over their loss versus Sentinels, you have two of the most rabid fan bases, I think, in the Americas, at least for North American teams, battling against each other. They're going to be making absolutely outrageous claims off of that one series that was incredibly close, by the way, between the two teams. Um, yeah. Came down to the wire, but... Uh, people were talking like 100 Thieves were done um, uh, at some sure. points, but I, I think they showcased not only that they have that, that, that player quality difference. I, in fact, actually, now that I'm watching this clip, I'm remembering a lot of it did come down to they were able to win their shots and trade out. Yeah, which honestly was kind of lacking in the... the not, not, I'm not saying the prior series only. I'm talking lock-in and stuff like that too. It didn't. It didn't feel as good as Red Bull, and I think this is the final final time where I'm like, okay, this was good. Like this was good, but I mean, you're still uh, you're you're acting like I I, I'm not saying you're specifically going at me, but like the result, the reaction I have about Hundred Thieves after last week was a lot based off of a trend from Lockin, not necessarily mm -hmm. anything else. Cryo had a rough week against Sentinels, and that is in a time where they're still not necessarily even finding super value out of him. Sure, he's now full, almost full-time playing the Jet, which is good. That's a good change. But if you still can't get the what you got in this game out of him, then that's that's a scary thing, you know? So, I mean, it was a good series, but Evil Geniuses, I, I, I was looking at this and thinking, oh my goodness, like more so it's them again trolling than anything else. 100 Thieves looked great, but I, I'm not convinced.
I'm okay. EG makes me sad. I, and I mean, for a lot of different reasons, but one of them is they're still full armor believers. And I just, <laughs> I feel like we're past that point now. Like, and I, I used to think like EG was just like the really smart team. You know, they always had like really good theory. Like I, I remember even talking to Potter. She was a huge fan of shorty secondary, even last year, um, which is like taking over. Uh, I haven't watched, uh, other regions as closely, but I know EMEA like ninety yeah, percent no, of the players in Serbia are all buying you'll see that all seconds. The time. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what uh, what the what the theory is, what the the statisticians in the evil geniuses camp have cooked up, but um, it's not very genius. Bigger fish to fry. They, Eighty IQ at best. The, I mean, again, in that interview with Potter, um, she seemed to indicate that. She was throwing for draft pick for next year, but I don't think anyone's told them that there's no draft pick. So that's that's one of their <laughs> biggest issues, I think. <laughs> During the, like the fucking the NFL draft. <laughs> no, like, I yeah, mean we'll tank this season. We'll get first pick. We'll get we'll get yay <laughs> next year. Yeah. We'll get yay. On I, first I, th I think. On that. I think though that actually you should have expected this EG team to not be that great, but people were very. Like um, people I was are fans so of the team. For this team, but but also that I think that the rosters that they're running, I don't think they've ever made sense. I think having Apoth in to play smokes and having BCJ on um, yeah. on initiator was just an absolute no brainer from the very beginning. And I was always really confused why they had Com in the roster. There must be something that Com adds in terms of his communication or leadership or something. Even though Boostio is the IGL. And, like, I mean, me and Brad have talked about it on stream before. We got in touch with Com last year and asked him if he was doing any secondary calling, and he said no, it was all on Boostio. So I don't understand what Com is bringing to the team. Presumably it's something, but it makes all the sense in the world to me to just shove Apoth in, play Smokes, because he looked like a really good up-and-coming player, and then have um, BCJ play Initiator for yeah. them. But certainly not subbing BCJ out when he looked like their best player to put Demon 1 in. I don't oh. get it. And that was that was very unusual. This tweet here, pre-match tweet, three hours posted, four likes. I mean, oh God Almighty! I mean, I don't want to go. Listen, I don't want to go too hard on this, but Kurt, if you scroll through that social media, I don't know what they've got going on. They've got like this graphics that their template for their for their match tweets is like Christmas themed or something. I don't I don't know how to describe it. Look at this. If you go through any of their like That's cool. their 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 match tweets, uh -huh. not these ones. Find find some ones about the player profiles because that's the ones that <laughs> that you're that he, oh, he, oh, he, what? Up, up, oh, don't go past it. They got like Christmas themed <laughs> like we're going live. What's with tweets. the frame? I don't get the frame. It's everywhere. It's like a a frosted glass Christmas esque. 32 likes that one went crazy it's just yeah, the it's, same picture every time with different logos yeah it's it, i don't know what's happening but... how many how many likes has that one got now <laughs> like the uh, the pick the the one of uh the one of ethan 26 26 26 how many replies we could, we could saying, uh, likes oh, right now i mean say? that is just ridiculous <laughs> 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 Why? I mean, who are you, 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 you were trolling. You were trolling. You added me as well, so it didn't <laughs> even go to every, to all of your yeah, followers. You got to put a dot or something in front of it. No, Kurt, you damn. added the at sideshow account. You don't uh, yeah, own the I, at sideshow account. I did account. the wrong account, and also this is just mean. <laughs> I don't want to do it. It is quite. I don't want to do, do it. I'm sorry. The easiest ratio now. of Dude, your come life. Come on, please. Just, but just I hit with the easiest. Ray, show uh, them. See, no, no, let's let's run a scientific experiment, Kurt. <laughs> if you type the words ratio, how quickly <laughs> can you overtake a tweet that's been out there on the EG social media for, for what, 24 hours nearly at this point? Yes, yeah, science I can't even find <laughs> this tweet. Scientific oh, experimental ratio. Science experiment ratio. <laughs> All right, and none of us touch it. None of us touch yep, it. And just, yep, see, yep. Okay. just see what happens. The problem we'll is, is that you're doing this on broadcast, so there's like people that are seeing this. So obviously it's gonna ratio, right? Well, refresh the page. Yeah, we'll see what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give it a cheeky refresh, see how long it takes. Oh, it's already succeeded. <laughs> no! It's already, so it's already up to 48, 69 <laughs> likes, nice.
Because this is what I'm saying. It's insane that they have such a... They are literally on broadcast to... Whoa, what? whoa, whoa. Ten Someone times just as liked many? EG's tweet, though. What are you guys doing? We're helping out. I mean, yeah, we're, we're helping. helping. Oh, okay. We're helping. We're adding visibility Dude, to their social. 29. <laughs> you, okay, I mean... They're that is playing quite mean. in front of I mean how many how many thousands of people are concurrent in that EG game when they're playing like against hundred thousand eighty at least. Yeah. 200, no, two fifty maybe, something like that. Right. So I mean, what is that? Tw uh like a hundred times more than people are watching this? Yep. Have we got like two K? Normally we're at like Yeah, 2K. but we're also not doing a call they're not doing a call to action on the broadcast go like the EG tweet. What if, yeah, what if but they shouldn't need a call to we? No, no, you're right. You're right. Hey, I don't. I don't know why we're like discuss. Like we're that that Twitter is terrible. It's just go live tweets, just constantly. Like, of course, nobody's liking anything because it's a dead Twitter. Like, there's no, there's no content. There's no funny. There's no engagement. There's no okay. But you know, you know why everyone, Dude, everyone wants to watch Common Core? Yeah. Whoa, they're up to sixty three likes. Everybody wants to watch Karmic Core because they're so bad, right? I think EG are actually approaching that same level of bad, but without the funny. So what I would suggest to EG is if you actually want to, to become popular, give up on being good and send your team in the opposite direction. Put in the subs as often as you can just to get the rotation going, just to get people excited and start fucking around because you will get people who are so happy to watch an eg game you will build fans by people molding about your play <laughs> i'm on board and you know what i'll raise it too because remember last year how every week after that icebox map we were just bat chesting over their sage walls it's like oh my god the sage is so crazy you know all the lineup stuff Pick Sage every map. Give us some just absolutely nutty walls. That's the only thing they play for anymore is just grim walls. And they just do it on BCT. Yeah. This, yeah. I mean, you guys are, I think, yeah, no, that would, I don't think they gain Marketing fans. geniuses. I don't think they've gained fans, but people would be interested to I'd watch I'd be their fan. Games. Here's the thing. I'm already interested to watch EG because they do like to cook. They, they love to have a lot of preset ideas. They just don't have enough extra they don't they don't have uh, i previously described this team as trying to sprint before they can walk because i feel like when you're building a team you need you need the, the fundamentals the foundation needs to be built where you're able you've got team play the coordination's there that you're able to be trading scaling effectively without too many gaps in your play and then you can start to add in cute ideas that are going to be winning you rounds that you're throwing out that people can counter strap or whatever else i feel like when you focus so much on and spend a lot of server time on that aspect you're putting, you're putting too many resources into an area that's um, either not going to work because um, some of your plays rely on, on them going into a specific area or playing in a certain way. Um, and, uh, and then you're just caught lacking when teams do upset your timings, which, um, listen, 100 Thieves, they didn't do anything special in, the, in this win. They just played together. They played tight. They traded each other nicely. Um, it's that kind of level of play that we've said that, that they, they had before, and it was enough to, to bring, yeah, bring them over the line quite the significantly. It was nice, but EG's just not there. I mean, it's just a complete coordination gap. When you yeah. when you look at the attack size, it's just like, yeah. where are they? Where, they why were, are you... They had mm. terrible spots. Icebox was painful at times because it looked like the amount... The comm was just clueless at times. You look at that guy. He's being, he's being shot from the side. He's like looking at the sky, looking at the floor. He's like, oh, God, just knocked my water bottle over. <laughs> but the yeah i the coordination no it feels like nobody's on the right page with that team sometimes from time to time but um yeah i mean it's not just for hundred teams it, it's trending like really often now and i don't think this is really that much of a positive for hundred thieves i think it was a bit of a free win and i think the next two weeks are actually going to be the important ones to pay attention to for hundred thieves because they play against a cloud nine team that's clearly you know got something going for them there hundred thieves are expected to win if you're a team with aspirations like 100 Thieves, you've got to be able to put away that Cloud9 team after they've just lost their star player and their IGL. And if you don't, that's rough. And then the next team up is Crew, who we've seen a pretty competent at split and not much else. And again, if they're not able to put Crew away, yeah. then you start really having questions. So they've got two favored wins coming up. And if they don't go clean 2-0, then worrying signs ahead for 100 Thieves. Okay. Final topic for America's here, or at least the final team that we're going to be talking about and explaining, but mainly a player here, just for the, the clicks, honestly, a little bit clickbaity. But is 10s the problem with Sentinels? 
Is he the problem, guys? Is Tens the problem? Is he is he a problem? He didn't have a good game against NRG. Didn't didn't perform particularly well. But I think uh, NRG were shoring up a lot of their problems. I think from the previous week, definitely uh, fixing some of those mistakes. Yeah, let me just hit you with the answer here, and it's no. He's not the yeah. problem, but he didn't get any help on Icebox in particular. Um, I think that the the ideas here for Sentinels and just their, they're, they're lacking a bit of their team identity right now, I think. They're, they're in a really weird spot huh. where, what? How weird, they're lacking their team identity after you shift two of your players off of their primary yeah. roles that they've played forever. Huh, interesting. But it's also, they don't even know who wants to really be playing the entry role between tens and second. Yeah. So, yep. the, you know, even before they made those shifts, they still had an identity crisis, and it's just been exacerbated by Def wanting to be moving into the like calling initiator roles. Uh, and this, I, I don't know, they're they're in a they're in a rough spot. Yeah, I don't know. I I agree with what you're saying, but also like, I think tense is a problem. I think part of, part of the reason why they're lacking identity is because he's not flexible, right? Yeah. I think that is a major reason why they're forcing in a lot of double duelists. Um, they got really, un not unlucky, they got outplayed in the map veto in this in this series like significantly by NRG, not just forcing them away from all of their double duelist maps. Um, but yeah, Tens has to play Jet. And if he's not playing Jet, then I, I honestly thought the KO stuff was working pretty well for them at Locken and at, at Ludwig Turek, but it's, it's yeah. forcing Zekin into a spot where he's constantly playing the initiator. And then on top of that, they have all this other stuff going on. So, like, I'm not going to say he's the problem, but he's, a, like, the inflexibility of tens is a problem. I'm not going to say the performance at all was not a problem. Like, that's going to happen every once in a while. It's it's tens. He's but they, they could have played Jet on both of these maps. They could have played Jet on both of these maps and still found excellent success. But they don't. I mean, they, it looked like they picked Lotus just because they saw NRG were bad at it. They didn't actually come in with a good game plan, good protocols. They don't look anywhere near as coordinated on their retakes. Like yeah. Zekin's the only player that really seemed like he had a feel for what was going on. They won one retake, which when you compare that to last time when NRG was playing against Leviathan, Leviathan were winning every retake. Mm -hmm. But that's just, just a massive difference between Leviathan and Sentinels in terms of where they're at currently. And then on Icebox, the Sova's great here. But no one's going forward with tents. No one's helping him actually take that space. He's just got a recon to play off. Yep. Yeah, that was really poor. Although I, I will say, like, deep into that game, obviously they're getting battered, but ten starts to try to go hero mode and just dies to Psalm every time in the Viper Molly. Like, yeah. that, was, that was bad, and that was all him. But again, it's, I'm not going to say, like, the performance is specifically, like, uh, eye-opening or anything like that. Like, it's Sentinels against NRG. I think they have deeper problems, and it, it's it's a part of the role swaps all around on the three player, basically players, but also you're you're trying to do that while integrating Sasi and Pancata, and you're trying to implement this weird game plan where Sasi and Pancata are together at all times when they're playing Sentinel and Controller. They're like paired up like a duo, and all, always swapping sides together. And Zekin and Tens are playing together, which makes sense based off the rules, but that's also very inflexible, and you're also not building the protocols that you need between all of your players. So it's it's deep with Sentinels, and I mean, they're still going to pr probably get a couple wins here and there, but I'm not looking at a contending team for Tokyo here at all. You know what I would think might have solved Sentinels' problems? Remember how in the offseason, they were like, or Dapper was like, you know, I got offered to be the sixth man for Sentinels? Uh, but didn't want to do it. I actually think that was the perfect situation for Sentinels because they have a player that's like, because uh, the transition from last year to this year, it was like Chambers out, right? And we're going to be playing like Killjoy, Cypher, like normal Sentinels on most maps. Dapper was so good on the Killjoy. And I think that of any team that could have run like a six man experiment, I think Sentinels would have been that team. Um, or even just like to solve the flexibility problem, like, Dapper is just there on Sentinels every time. Zekin can play, you know, dive initiator, whatever you need from him. Um, but I actually think losing Dapper really hurt their potential to pivot during the year um, if they ran into like these uh, team composition issues, you know, because I'm not, I'm not a hater of the double duelist. I used to be, but I'm like coming around to it now. But I think that 
there's a bit of a, like, I, I see it much more on like the split, for example, as opposed to like, I think maybe on fracture, it's a bit too deep in the sauce on that. Um, but yeah, effectively, I think that having Dapper as an option would have been really huge. Yeah, well, not having a perma sentinel here definitely yeah. sucks. Like, Pancata's yeah. going in that direction, but you can tell he's uncomfortable. Like, uh, there's mo moments where he just like pushed way up and his turret goes down and there's a flank coming. And it's like, thankfully, he has good awareness, but uh, it's definitely. I mean, it hasn't really costed them that hard right now, but there's definitely moments where you could tell Pencata's uncomfortable. You could tell Sassy's uncomfortable. And mm -hmm. if they if they did have a perma sentinel, it would be different. And Def was supposed to be that when I looked at this team. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just rolls seems to be the biggest uh, crux of a lot of this as well. But the answer to the question is tens the poem sentinels? No, but also I maybe know. is the conclusion <laughs> we come to, I think. But it's... Uh, the next it's... two games are against Leviathan and Loud. That's a hard upcoming matches. I'm not gonna lie. Those two matches, yeah. I mean, those are just. I'll answer your question though. Tens isn't the problem, but he's not just the solution like he used to be in the good old days. Mm. That was deep. Okay. Hell. The <laughs> Josh is okay. That was very okay. Very dead panel. <laughs> very British. No, sorry. It just it, it, it's it's a great line, but it reminds me of the live laugh love stuff that people have on their houses. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, alcohol's not the problem, it's the solution. That's just immediately what ran through my head. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what Sentinels need. They need Alcohol. to pre-game. They're not pre-gaming yeah. before the they go on claws. stage. Get back yeah. to the roots oh. of the white claws. It's Icebox 0.0. It's not It's not an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah. That's why they got stomped. That's crazy. Well, <laughs> yeah, their upcoming matches are not going to be too... Uh, it's going to be hard. Hard. Two, but it, it, listen, put this another way. They've got two weeks where they're not expected to get wins and they can just work on stuff. Yeah. But that's okay. pretty good. I the don't problem know. is, are they going to work on the right stuff? The, 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 if they, they get battered up... energy loud, Leviathan, like I expect them to go deeper into the problems and try to change things even further, which is probably not going to help either. Then they go oh. one and three, and then it's like, oh, God, the expectations of the fans, it's insurmountable. And then. You know, there's pressure from in the internal coming. corpos. The suits Week are like, five. what's going on? Why are we losing? We spent coming. money on this team. What's going on? And then they're like, oh, well, you know, it's a process. It's a team. It takes a bit of time. And they're like, no, we need changes now. And then, uh, God, guys, we're going to get to week five. And you do fucking the script's going to turn. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> you guys are not going to expect it. I'm telling you. Let's talk about predictions. America's, it was weird to say America's week three predictions, but I guess we are a week behind, aren't we? No. What? No, we're, no, we're, we're okay. all in the three. same week, dude. How do weeks work? The rubber show is wrong. You I just play I just... the day, like EMEA goes on the today. weekdays, nice and you go on weekends. So technically, your Monday is in the next week, but it's week still three. the earlier week. But it's week. No, three. I don't know what you guys are trolling Brun about. America's on week three. Everybody else is on week four. No, no they're not. EMEA's no. on week three too. <laughs> really? Well, yeah, <laughs> are you I'm sure? literally on their no, channel right wrong. now. <laughs> yeah, no, no. The the reason why you might be thinking that is because Emi has already had a super week, so they've already played three games, Wait. but they're still on week three. Oh, I mean, yeah, okay, but it's still Wait. week three. Got yeah. it. Yeah, oh, I've been trolled. No, and the Pacific themes. Oh yeah, I guess yeah. my brain works through uh, <laughs> number of matches played. I guess right, right, right. Wait. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 Pacific is on week four. No. Yes. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yeah, okay, my bad. Dude, I'm Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's some, there was some logic here. We weren't just, okay. We, America's, we're going to pretend that didn't happen. America's week three predictions. Let's get into that. Cloud9 versus 100 Thieves as our first predicted match between these two teams. What's it gonna be, Cloud Nine? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we Let's are split Ender. down the middle. Let's it's go handshake. Me and Josh going with Hundred Thieves, Ender and Bala with Cloud Nine as the pred. I think that's quite reasonable, honestly. I I, I don't think this is a slam dunk for Hundred Thieves. I think Cloud Nine have got some upset potential for sure. I love the way uh, C9 have been playing. I'm fully bought in to the Rooney hype train. It's happening. If they get split in the pool, that's a free win for C9. Also, with the uh, layoffs, uh, t they're down to like 60 thieves now. Um, so I just don't think <laughs> they're going to be able to bring the same kind of fight they've had in the pre previous weeks. 
Imagine uh, Cloud9 after dropping two players going for the 60 Thieves roast. I know. <laughs> God <laughs> almighty. Yeah. I don't think uh, that would work on social. I, I think the, um, the play style that 100 Thieves has been trying to go for is going to get rocked by Cloud9 and their loose play style, which is like what 100 Thieves wants to go for. So, play style diff again. I'm like, really? Yep. I feel like they match up quite nicely, it though. Is gonna be because cool. The biggest, the biggest strength of hundred of hundred thieves that we've already talked about for me is just that they are, they were really tight and playing off of each other, and the coordination was good. And I think one of the biggest advantages that Cloud9 have is that they are, they have this tight core that play at a certain pace, and they all know their timings of each other. Leave Sepper and Zelsis. and Rooney is just forced to keep up. Right, he he's been injected into the system. Jake plays very safe, but Rooney is the one who, listen, he's the big question mark of timing his util. But he's caught up pretty well. But I think that's how Cloud9 get a lot of their wins is by they play these cheeky timings. They love to work and weave in and out when they play the flashing comps. They take they take good timings against teams. I think if there's any team that wouldn't work against, it's a team that actually has rock solid foundations like a hundred thieves. And so I kind of went the other way in that in that thought process. I think Cloud9 will beat teams out that just are not going to be as clean. That are going to be leaving gaps in their play, but. 100 I Thieves, I don't see as, as one of them. a few gaps in 100 Thieves' play now. I don't think they're that same rock-solid team that we've seen past. I'm looking at the map pool here. 100 Thieves have been perma-banning Pearl, which is a good map for Cloud9. It's one that they've been very happy to go towards. But it will leave Split open. So I would expect that the first map is... Oh, you know, depending on which order they're in. But Cloud9 are probably going to go towards Split. 100 Thieves... Historically been good there, but... Didn't look amazing. I, I, I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's a 2-1 win for 100 Thieves, though. I, I have yet to see that same like depth from Cloud9. But I think, I think a lot of this is going to be a coaching battle. I think both teams are going to come in with very set ideas of what they want to do. And then their IGLs or you know, some of the more experienced players on Cloud9 as well, I'm sure we'll have some input as to how the game will evolve from there. But both teams are very like heavy on their set ideas early, or at least 100 Thieves used to be even more. I think it's going to be an interesting one. Okay. If 100 well, Thieves can't win, though, they're in a bad spot. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> You're hosting, bro? <laughs> yeah, I am hosting. Next, next matchup. <laughs> NI, NRG versus Made in Brazil. MIBR, baby. Head-to-head -head battle between these two teams. We've all got an NRG. Bish, bash, bosh. Someone break it away. And um, dirty Kurt. <laughs> what what needs to be said about this? What needs to be said? I mean, nothing. I mean, uh, you were wrong. Nothing. MIBR are not that great. Yep. NRG are gonna smoke him. Yep. Easy clap. Yep. Also, yeah, that's a NRG's guarantee. death was vastly exaggerated. The yeah. NRG yeah. going to lose yeah. to Sentinels. Were, I was NRG, very confused. Uh, I was like, what oh. are you? Why are you, what are you talking about? NRG death. He's on Sentinels. What are you saying? <laughs> I was so fucking confused. I, no, I wasn't even making a gag. I was like, genuinely, my brain was like, "What is this guy saying right now?" Um, yeah, they, yeah. People were people were overreacting, but that's. I think any of like the North American fan bases, with the exception of, like EG, because there's, there's like thirty of them, so they're not loud enough. But the like the North American fan base teams are, they, they just like they overreact. And yeah, but also, it's. Uh, it the NA fan base has really not been introduced to Furia. They have not been introduced to Leviathan. They really don't, uh, other yeah, than Loud, true. like they don't really know these teams yet. So they're going to find out, but it'll take <laughs> a little bit. That is true. That is true. All right. Next matchup Leviathan versus Sentinels. We've all gone Leviathan. That's unanimous, completely across the board. A lot of guarantees. Hey, kicking off at some point <laughs> through sheer statistics we're, we're just gonna have oh, definitely. there's going to be an upset oh, and I, people are going to be farming us for class. the rating for these unanimous picks is going to go down the drain it's not this real one, fast it's not this one no, this one is a guarantee this, one. this one's a real guarantee there's, we had some fake guarantees at the beginning of the EMEA, show when we we're talking yeah. emea and yeah. pacific but this is a real guarantee real <laughs> real i don't know okay. like sentinels just don't look ready for it it's like I don't know. Tens is about to get diffed by Taco. Sassy's about to get diffed by Mazzino. Yeah. Diffs all over the place. Heavy hit yeah. matchup coming up next, though, with this, uh, with this prediction. Evil Geniuses versus Crew. This is a true mm. battle. 
Holy Ooh, smokes and no way! And there's going oh, and the rest coping. of us are going crew. I'm coping. Oh, no. Look, this is the upset. This is the upset this week. All right, have EG given me anything it's not, to be it's excited not an upset, for, bro? There's a bottom no. two teams in the fucking league. Yeah, it's that's okay, but I'm, I, it's, they're upsetting you people. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's yeah. what's going to happen with this. I mean, EG are going to try and play pretty suburban Valorant, and then they're going to get done for suburban. tax evasion. <laughs> and they're going to get chucked in prison, and crew are going to take them to jail Valorant, and they're going to shit on them. That is what is going to occur from this game. Unless EG make sweeping changes, which has been hinted at by the senator, Seth King, with his little little leaks, little hints and rumors saying that the sub team of EG was was doing better than the main roster, and then they just they pull a complete one eighty and swap out all their players and their starting roster, oh which would be crazy. That'd be so funny. That's what I'm t that's what I'm saying. I think that's the best move from a marketing perspective as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean what, what I'm saying way, is but... I didn't want to give another false guarantee, so I had to I had to mix it up here. Oh, thank you, Bath. Thank you. Bath. Yeah. I didn't want you guys look like fools. Oh, I see. I got you. They're, they're, Bala, you said <laughs> last week that there were no tier gaps in Americas. Okay. There's a tier gap between these two teams. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on. That's... Hold on. Yo, you might be spitting. We need a new prediction. What? EG versus Carmine Core. Oh. If Where they do we both stand? lose next uh, if they both lose this week, we will do that next week. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean at the moment, Carmen Cole look, look worse. Like yeah, I'll save my thoughts on that. Any collection. Yeah. We'll review the VODs. We'll see what's people. up. Then we'll come to our conclusions. But uh, yeah. Next matchup. And this is our final one, I believe. Loud versus Furia. Match, match of the week. Of the week. Yeah. Match of the week. Battle of the Brazilian teams. Woo! Loud versus Furia. Who will be on top? We Let's are go, split ben. down the middle. Wow. Okay. Ender. And Josh have gone for Loud. Me and Bala have gone for Furia. I think uh, let's go with let's let's speak our piece on Furia. I think for a little bit here, Bala, me and you, because this. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I. I've already apologized for my past mistakes. I've seen the truth. Khalil is the future. Brazil is just producing superstar controller players, sentinel players at a rapid rate. Khalil is next out of the conveyor belt. He is the he is the fucking the second coming of Christ. That man is gonna is gonna be that extra element, and I think Loud have been getting pressed a little bit. They, a lot of their matches have been getting closer and closer, mainly because I think that they've been slipping up with um, some of the ideas on their comps. People as well have had a lot of odds to read how they play with a lot of their double controller comps, which is the uh, the archetype that they've been trying to play in. And I think that uh, a team like Fear right now have shown so many peaks. Um, that a team like Loud, if they keep trying to experiment, keep trying to play a bit wacky stuff with the Gecko, grand opportunities for some upsets and some counter striding, I think. Yep. I also think um, I don't really see how, like, I don't see how Loud is getting an edge in the map veto, how they have been in the in the past couple of matches anymore against Furia, given how we've seen weaknesses on some of their maps. So Furia showing an icebox that's disgusting, a pearl that is competitive with Leviathan, who definitely are weaker in terms of the like idea that they have so far with that Viper Harbor comp, but it's still it's still like they it's not like they fundamentally are misunderstanding it. I also think like the level that the individuals are playing up to right now is incredibly solid. And yeah. there's some people who are slightly under underperforming on loud at this current moment, not not in the past, not at Lockin or anything like that. I'm the only the only like hesitation I have with this prediction is that it's Brazil versus Brazil, and a lot of these Furia players have gone up against Loud many times potentially, and or just like some amalgamation of them, and they might have like a block. But I don't know. I feel like they're probably getting through that this time around. Loud have never lost to a Brazilian. Yep. Never. Yeah. And this would be the best opportunity. There's never been a second Brazilian team anywhere near as good as Furia. I mean, there just hasn't. Um, so this would be the best opportunity. But I'm, I was very, very tempted to go for Furia. I actually think it might even be the, the like odds-on pick to go for. But I'm still going to bank on Loud here for a, a few reasons, one of which being that kind of domestic dominance that they've had and the fact that they really understand um, how, to, how to beat people that they've played against for such a long time. 
Um, the other part of this too is that I don't think... I think we should be ending up on maps that are similar for both teams. I think Icebox Furia looked, look amazing at it, but Loud have also been incredibly good at that map. Um, you know, they, they should have probably been able to beat Fnatic in the grand finals of lock-in. They didn't in the end. An unbelievable comeback happened, but they certainly had their opportunities to be able to win that. Yeah. And Pearl is cap from Furia. I think they need to discard the comp. The neon double flash composition. I think it's great just, against the Harbor Viper. I think it's fantastic. I don't think they had any ideas for what they wanted to do on the defense side. I don't think they had even planned it out particularly. They decided we're going to start attack and we're just going to, you know, run it in. And then on defense, we'll wing it. We'll just hope that we've got enough rounds that we're going to be able to get up to that point. They got no value out of the neon whatsoever. And I don't. I think they're less likely to add stuff to their defense side than allowed are to figure out how to stop their executes and their attack sides from working again. So I think that that over, over a week's gap, allowed are more likely to look better on one half than, than Fury are to, to, yeah, um, to recover it. So th that's, that's the reason that I've gone for loud here, but I think it's very, very close. I'm on team loud. Uh, I mean, I already like rated C9 really highly, and I think they played really good Valorant throughout that series, uh, and Loud still won. Also, I think that was like one of the worst opping performances I've ever seen from Aspis. Like he could not land a shot with the operator. And they My were and they really still rough. won. Yeah. Um like I, I don't I don't know. Like and, and that's obviously like not normal. Um and it's more saying like he's gonna show up this next week. Um but yeah, I I will also say that I haven't watched Furia. They play too late for me, but I'm very confident and loud, so they get my vote. All they good. are very, very good. Furia are All very good. good. We'll let you I take the if, lead. If, yeah. With um the power rankings is where I was going to go with that. Yeah. But uh yeah, the uh that's our next segment. I'm cutting Josh off. I don't know what he was about no, to say. What were you gonna say? Nothing useful. Just more rambling. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's go into the America's power rankings. We're going to start off with our previous week's power rankings. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to go to the bathroom because I'm about to piss myself, but take it away. <laughs> you know what we should do for this segment? We should always have a timer so that we, like, force I'd like to. I thought you were going to say hot mic him, but... I'd like to start by adding the tears. Really? Why? Why? We just saw... Okay, I, maybe we can make a better argument this week because of how good Fury is and how I'm not going to have any problems convincing you guys, but, like... I don't. I, yeah, I, Furia I, I, should have been in the top four last week, and for silly, silly reasons, they didn't end up being. Yeah, but they should be in the top. They should have been low key in the top three last week, and okay. that's the that's the thing. That's that's why I was so heavily against the tier breaks last week. So maybe okay, let's let's start, but let's not start by adding the tier breaks. Let's start by re readjusting, okay? And All if right, you can okay. convince me, then then we'll then we'll be good. I will. Um, should we start from the bottom? I think it's easiest from the bottom. Eg. They just look like the worst team currently. Yep. And, um, and none of their ideas with like uh, the Demon 1 swaps or anything other than bringing Apoth in would be acceptable in my mind. And Cloud9 have climbed up. I think they look better than MIBR. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's a chance they look better than Sentinels. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know how to feel about the 100 Thieves. I mean, obviously I predicted Cloud9 this week, but... I think Sentinels look more lost than 100 Thieves, despite the fact that 100 Thieves lost to... Agreed. Agreed. Fully agreed. So I would put Sentinels at 6th. Oh, we're vibing. Hold up. Keep going. Right. And then... Yeah. So push, push 100 Thieves into the 5th spot. Then they're, they're not anywhere near the top 4 yet. It's almost yeah. like there's a tier gap, but okay. you know, we'll, we'll get to that later. <laughs> and then... Your top 4... I think it comes down to whether you think Fury or Loud are gonna are gonna win. Like who's gonna win there? Yeah, if you I think, think Fury put... are gonna win, you have to put them at number one. Yep, I put Fury at number one because I can't make an argue. I can't make an argument about like the other oh, top you teams guys are like being hard trolling. What? what? Wow, we haven't even we barely started, bro. You just sat down. <laughs> Look Did at you it. Say first? Fury at number one. Yes. Yeah. There's an argument. We make just an argument had, for we had anyone this as a topic. You've Go formulated ahead. a skit, and this is, and you've, you are, it's not you a are skit. controlling me. It's not a skit. I don't even predict them to win, but I think that overall, from what we've seen, they look better than Loud. So where is Leviathan? They, they just beat 
Leviathan. They beat the piss out of them on Icebox. Go, go ahead, make an argument, Brighton. Go, let's let's go. The number You're one team. Stung locked. Number one team. Yes. <laughs> He's lost. <laughs> He's absolutely lost. Ender? Any? Maybe? I haven't seen them play, man! I I anybody see else? Not Furia! <laughs> nope. Why? 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 But surely it's too soon. Okay. It, if yeah, it is probably. too soon, who goes above them? Loud because they're two and zero, despite the fact that, listen, we all know that they haven't been playing that well. You can watch them with your wee little eyeballs and see that they're just a little off in terms of their coordination. They're not on point individually. They're doing a bit of a trollery in terms of the house. They're using some of their utility and comps. It, it's, it's not been that immaculate loud performance from them. Furia look better to the eye test. Your, your only argument against them is loud of one at lock in. Don't doubt them, you fool. Which is why I predicted loud. I mean, sure, but I'm still going to power rank Fury above them. God damn. Yeah, there's no argument, is there? I, hard yeah. to find. However, there is an argument about Leviathan going in fourth. Yes. Which is. Yes. Which is that they beat NRG to start with. Okay. So let's, let's like, begin there. Wasn't that two weeks ago? Yeah. Well, and you, well okay. three yes, weeks ago. Yes, yes, Pacifics. Right, but so. yeah. So you think that NRG have improved a lot of Lotus? Yeah, I would agree. Leviathan yeah. would still beat them at Lotus. Yeah, even Leviathan, with NRG I think, were... Like Leviathan are the best team at Lotus in the Americas. There's one map. Yeah. They're also going to be able to beat NRG on a bunch of other maps, like Ascent, for example. NRG's Ascent still doesn't look that great. NRG would beat them on Icebox. We just keep going through the map pool. Leviathan have performed better than them so far. Um, I think NRG would beat them on Haven. Possibly, but that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, and Leviathan's Haven, Haven is really good. So, yeah. I mean, I don't think you can say that for sure, but I I'm there with you. I would maybe put Leviathan in second still. Yeah. In second? Yeah. I, loud I third, like NRG this. fourth. Hold on, is this the same loud that, you know, got yeah. second place and Yeah. And we're it is. We're putting him a third? Yeah, based I'm off the not. first two weeks performance. I, I I I think they'll rise back up. Don't get me wrong. I think they'll probably be number one at the end of this. Although I right now I'm really hype on Fury, but I think they'll probably be in the finals of this and maybe winning, especially if Fury fall off. Hundred percent loud will be back up there. But right now, I really think Furious map pool is deep enough to give them number one. Do we really think Khalil is going to be able to keep up his unbelievable performance as Dude, the current best player in America's? Have good, you got bro. any Shown reason to? Box. I mean, he's Shown literally popped insanely off on every map that they've played so far, hasn't he? Yes. Has, yes, he, had, he, has. has he had a one bad map? No. Maybe the, the original split? Let me take a look. Right, so based off no think, evidence at all, you want to predict the downfall the of Khalil is cap, happening this the week. The pull's cap. Uh, I, what else is cap? The split is not that cap, bro. I know oh, they're playing Chamber. horrible. No, no, no. The split no, no, was pretty no, no, cap. No, no. Come on, come on. There's the ideas, like and they just no. the ideas were just never getting used because crew kept going on the other other side of the map. The ideas are not good anyway, though. They I, don't put Jazine in good spots. What do you mean? He had like so many good, good freaking uh, rendezvous. Set up. He has rendezvous that are like the uh, that he gets out to a safe spot, but it doesn't allow him to actually control the map very well. He can it allows very him to easily rotate get... from from ropes to to mail super fast, which is just a difficult rotate that you have to go through spawn for. There's like a couple of those that are that are pretty good. He has one that's like B main up to up to back up to heaven. Like there were there were some good ones. I'm not gonna say it's fucking amazing. I don't think it's a good idea to play chamber on this map, but I I don't think it's cap. I think if you Run that again, you're going to be like, holy shit, this is crazy. Digizin is going insane. I think that's I mean, totally a that's, possibility. It's possible that that would happen, yeah. But I think that most of the time, that you you know where he's going to be. You throw a piece of utility over there, and he's going to have to TP away, and then he's miles out of the fight. Yep. I think compared to a jet, he just doesn't have the ability to fight on multiple corners. I, I don't think it was that good. I, I But I'm still going for Fury. I think that they're... The question just becomes, who's better than them? And I think the only team that you can put up there right now is Loud, or you can say that Leviathan on another day end up beating them. But it's between it's that's the top three right now in my head. Yep. 
Cool. Great. I just know. I over. don't think. I'm trying to. I was trying to think in my head about the map pool of Fury, like the depth of, of Fury's map pool. Because the, the pool is half baked. They're, they don't Pearl play Fracture because they second ban it. They second ban um, it does not mean they don't play it. No, I know. But they, they have been avoiding it like across the board. Which yeah, means... well, that just means that we don't know what they have on it. It doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. I mean, based off of the rest of their comps and stuff like that, you can tell that they've been cooking. So, I mean, if they're not, if they're floating it, you have yeah. to assume that it's it's somewhat ready. What what team By the is way, the Haven is, get fracture right now? Their Haven was pretty nutty, even though it was a weird comp against. Yeah, um, they had the Viper Fnatic. Harbor against Fnatic. Who knows whether they even run that? Like, I, yeah, Fury have I, definitely been in the goofy comp laboratory, but uh, you just don't like this. You're still hating on Fury. I'm just That's a hater, crazy. Basically, still... yeah, I'm just a hater. I, I get, yeah. I get, I get not wanting to put them up there. I think it's too early too, but I just cannot make an argument for anybody else. I, it's not been clean from anybody else. There will be or an think... argument next week if Loud beats them for sure. Do you think Leviathan would beat Fury on Haven? Um, impossible to say. Yeah, I think that Leviathan would beat them. So on even. Split. I think Leviathan would beat them on split. I can't even remember what Leviathan, Leviathan run on split. split? When, when, when did they play split last? Are you just saying that because you don't like Furious Split? Yeah. <laughs> Basically. It's they unreal. played it in Copenhagen last, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they beat them on split. Well, I mean, okay. Let's yeah, just come back into the map pool, so it makes time. sense. I, yeah. Yeah, their pearl isn't ideal, but I think they beat their pearl. Leviathan? You mean the team... They just almost lost to them on Pearl 1311. Yeah. They did beat them, though. <laughs> they did beat them. <laughs> True, yeah. I guess. Okay. I think Fury would win versus Leviathan on Ice Ball. And they beat them on a set. They did. Well, that's going to help for the next two weeks. <laughs> Dude, just, just, just. I, we, you can't put Fury or any lower than top two. You can put Loud somewhere in the top three, and you can put Leviathan somewhere in the top three. So, I mean, oh, take, take your pick. Okay, sure. Wait, how think do you think they'll do on Bind? <laughs> I think this is some weak... God, how damn. would you do this, Bren? Give me an alternate version. Give me instead a of just board. muttering. Give me a double. <laughs> Give me a double. Then, then we'll, let's just say we randomly generated this one then. <laughs> If you want it to be random, no, this is I just think it's a think random it's version. Very difficult. I'm trying to, it's like if you want to put any thought into it, you have to kind of just compare the relative strengths of where they're at on maps. And then in, when I get down that rabbit hole, I'm thinking, okay, Furia, Leviathan. Do I want Leviathan at number one? Do I think that on another day they would beat them on Ascent? Yeah. No, you're thinking way too deeply, dude. Yeah, just... I do, but that's but that's but that's the only way you can get no, a power ranking. No, no, that's, no, no, good. Just, that's good. Just, that's good. That's good. There is no power good. There's no. There is no good. There is no good. <laughs> Our power rankings have always been dog shit, Brent. Anyways, oh, yeah, but it. also there Fury is no great one. power ranking. Fucking Sentinels at ten. No, <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. no. <laughs> that doesn't mean you have to get rid of everything. <laughs> also, tier breaks after four, after seven, and after nine. After four, after seven. What is this guy doing? <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back next four, week. Seven. Yep. Yeah. There's a top four, a top three. Yeah. And a bottom two and a bottom one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yes. I love how yeah. perfectly yes. sectioned off like all of the North American and South American teams <laughs> except for NRG. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, actually. No, 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 no! I can't, I can't get on board with that MIBR sectioned off with crew. Why not? Okay, so you don't think there's one between seven and eight? I could agree with that. I think no, crew and MIBR are so close together, and they could definitely one of them could beat Cloud Nine or Sentinels or Hundred Thieves. Yeah, I could be down on removing that tier break. I'm. But there is, there is a tier break between four and five, and I do believe there's a tier break with above EG currently. Yeah. I can't disagree with the placement of anything else. I mean, people and are going to disagree because me. Sentinels literally beat 100 Thieves. We've pissed off the Sentinels fans instantly by yeah, disregarding but, that match. Or not disregarding but, it, but, but combining it. I thought it that with 100 the Thieves looks a lot better, um, even though they're playing against EG. And I thought that 
Ben's issues got um, amplified when they got really pushed. Um, yeah. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Cloud Nine's going to be both of those teams. Unlucky. Possible. My. <laughs> They're in the same tier yeah, after I, all. I, 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 I kind of just give up. Okay. Am I allowed to give up? <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, okay. Josh and I are undefeated in power rankings. So like, <laughs> I give up. <laughs> I mean, we've also created some garbage. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I still think there's some loud slander, but you're the experts. Lock, lock, they could lock, lock it, it in. Experts. I mean, if Lock I would win in. after this, we'll put them to number one and we'll act like it never happened. Yeah. <clears throat> like that. No, God almighty. Like that. Um, all right. Boom. Let's go to the final segment of the podcast, and it's Wyatt's Weekly Award. Not broken yet. <laughs> What? <laughs> that's very good. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, God. Yeah, there's a couple of... Um, actually, I like all of these suggestions here. I was going to go with one of them, but I think... <laughs> oh. there's, a, there's a lot of people we can... Uh, we can go for for the Wise Weekly Award this week. We could go with Mimi for hosting for the first time ever and doing a pretty good job on America's Broadcast. A counterpoint, I also had to emergency host uh, on EMEA for a segment. So We could also give it to Ender one for emergency Just hosting saying. one segment in EMEA. We could also give it to Wyatt I thought that was quick for shot. his broadcast debut. Uh, we quick shot. could also give it to Khalil for popping the fuck off on Furia. Um, and you're Khalil gonna give it to was who, the player so. I wanted to give it to, oh. so I'm going to give it to Khalil, I think, for his performances. Nice. He's looking like the best player in America right now with his level of play that he's putting up. Doing it on Sentinel, doing it on, uh, on Viper as well, the pseudo-Sentinel, I suppose, used in some comps. But uh, Khalil is popping off. And uh, yeah, he's been a significant, uh, significant factor in terms of Furious wins and, uh, and securing him a lot of rounds. So... Uh, that's yeah. it. He's in That's the award. Nasty, nasty good smokes player. And I think he's going to keep it up. Uh, I think that Loud actually should have picked him up. When they lost Pancada, he was the, the number one prospect in my head. So I was a bit confused why they went for two E's, but maybe Khalil just believed in this Furia lineup. Not really sure, yep. but it's working out for him. Cool. Lacha Valorant, episode 129. Thank oh. you for watching, everybody. Leave a comment about what part of the way i did this last time i said like what what, what did you hate the most out of the episode which toothpaste do you use yeah what yeah what toothpaste do you guys use and also like what is your favorite like animal as well like i want to know everybody's <laughs> favorite animals in the comments <laughs> uh that would be nice make sure you like make sure you subscribe make sure you catch all of our content as well follow us on our social medias we've got ender sideshow bala ender thanks for stepping in as well thank you for joining us on the podcast much appreciated go follow the tiktok Yep. Oh, that yeah. One as well. a, a we have a TikTok? TikTok now. We got a TikTok now. Yeah, follow the Platchat TikTok. What's our Platchat TikTok? Platchat Val. Cool. Platchat Val. All right. By the way, we have, we have six times ratio DG. <laughs> yep. And <laughs> we did that. We have so much clout, so wow. much pull, so much power. All right. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.